welcome to part 1 of new series American Comics I have amazing luck. If you encounter any issues or have feedback, please let me know in the comments. Your input helps me improve, and I'm here to make sure you have the best experience possible. Enjoy the content. Chapter 001. Brain Storage Place. Lost. Boom, 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 boom. The crisp sound of blacksmithing sounded in the small and dark cave. At this time, Tony Stark was staring seriously at the steel helmet he was be asterisk 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 g in his hand, his eyes firm as if he was about to go to the battlefield at any time. Hurry up, they will become suspicious if you delay for too long. Dr. Ethan reminded in a low voice. Tony Stark didn't answer and just increased the speed of his tapping. Just as the two were racing against time, a voice suddenly sounded behind them. May I ask, where is this? The moment the voice sounded, Tony Stark and Dr. Ethan were stunned. The two of them froze and stopped what they were doing at the same time. For a moment, the cave was eerily quiet, and one could even hear rapid breathing. I don't know how long it took for Tony Stark to turn around stiffly, and then he realized that the person speaking was actually a young man who looked like he had just grown up. Looking at the young man warily, Tony Stark asked in a deep voice, Who are you? The young man replied very politely, Hello, my name is Luobai. Tony Stark did not lower his guard, but continued to ask, Are you in the same group with them? Luobai's face showed a bit of confusion, and he couldn't help but ask, Who are they? Those terrorists outside. Tony Stark said, his eyes sharper. Luobai was stunned and immediately denied, Of course not. Do I look like a terrorist? Then how did you get in? Tony Stark then asked. Luobai was silent for a while. After a moment, he asked with slight hesitation. I'm going to say, I appeared out of thin air like this. Do you believe it? Tony Stark. Ethan. Luobai didn't lie. He really appeared out of thin air. It's just that he didn't appear out of thin air using some magical ability, but time travel. Do you believe that he just went downstairs to pick up a courier, didn't get into a car accident or fell into the sewer and actually traveled through time? In fact, Luobai didn't believe that he had traveled through time at first. After all, as a top student at Qingbei University, he has always believed in science. It wasn't until he discovered that the sloppy uncle standing opposite him looked exactly like the actor who played Iron Man, Tony Stark in the Marvel movie, and even talked about terrorists, that Luo Bai had to suspect that he had traveled through time. As a loyal viewer of Marvel movies, this scene is very familiar to him. This is clearly the plot of Iron Man 1. Tony Stark was attacked by terrorists and captured in a cave, and finally created steel armor. At this moment, isn't that sloppy uncle holding a steel helmet? Realizing that he had really traveled to the Marvel world, Luo Bai felt extremely depressed. Anyone who knows a little bit about the Marvel world knows that this is not a normal urban world. What kind of terrorist attack on the underworld is just a small scene in this world? After all, there are many big disasters like alien invasions here. For Luo Bai, a crispy college student who has never even touched a gun, how he lives here is secondary. The current thing to consider is how he should escape from the cave. System? Grandpa? Didn't you say that time travelers all have cheats? Where's my cheat? Luo Bai was screaming in his heart. Seemingly seeing that he had been silent and still had a ferocious expression on his face, Tony Stark finally couldn't help but ask, Are you okay? Fortunately, Luo Bai speaks good English, so communication was not too difficult. I don't feel very good. Luo Bai replied frustrated. No one feels good about being caught here. Tony Stark smiled bitterly. Without waiting for Luo Bai to speak, he asked, You just said that you appeared out of thin air. What do you mean by that? Luo Bai didn't know how to explain his time travel, so he could only answer helplessly, This matter is very complicated, and I don't know how to explain it. There's no explanation? Tony Stark asked, with a hint of doubt in his tone. In fact, Luo Bai had long felt his hostility and knew the reason why. Tony Stark was captured by terrorists and brought to the cave. After experiencing inhuman treatment, he would doubt Luo Bai's identity. But if he wants to get out of here, Luo Bai needs Tony Stark's help. Thinking of this, Luo Bai quickly explained, Although my identity is a bit suspicious, I am definitely not the same group as those terrorists. How do you prove that? Tony Stark asked. No proof is needed. If I were a terrorist, you would have been exposed by now, wouldn't I? Luo Bai asked. At this time, the two Starks are secretly making escape weapons. If Luo Bai is really a terrorist, measures will be taken as soon as he is discovered. Can I still chat with him here? Tony Stark didn't say a word, 
but it was easy to see from the expression on his face that he had relaxed his guard. Okay, you convinced me. Since you are not a terrorist, why are you here? This is not a good place. Tony Stark asked again. Luo Bai reluctantly replied, Actually, I don't really want to come here. He came here directly as soon as he traveled through time, and he had no choice. You, Tony, we're running out of time. Tony Stark seemed to want to say something more, but Dr. Ethan interrupted him. Considering that they really didn't have much time now, Tony Stark did not continue to ask. After suppressing many doubts in his heart, he continued to bang the steel helmet in his hand. Seeing that Tony Stark no longer doubted him, Luo Bai finally breathed a sigh of relief. But he did not completely relax at this moment, because he knew that he still had a hard battle to fight next. Thinking of this, Luo Bai complained in his heart again, Please, I'm a time traveler. Don't I really have no system, do I? No, no? He called in his mind for about a minute. It wasn't until the sound of Tony Stark finishing the system still didn't sound that Luo Bai finally confirmed that he really didn't have a system. This made him a little desperate, but what made him even more desperate? At this time, the terrorists seemed to have noticed something unusual in the cave. There were heavy slamming sounds and curses in the originally quiet cave, and from time to time, gun warnings could even be heard. Chapter 002 Realizing that the terrorists had noticed them, Dr. Ethan became a little panicked. Tony, are you okay? They have discovered something is wrong. Dr. Ethan asked in a panic. Soon Tony Stark gave the answer, It's done. Ethan helped me put on the steel armor. Without hesitation, Ethan immediately stepped forward to help him put on the steel armor. Wearable steel armor is just the first step. Without electric steel armor, it is impossible to exercise. It will take five minutes for the suit to complete the power supply. We have to hurry up, Dr. Ethan said as he looked outside the door, always paying attention to whether there were any terrorists breaking in outside the door. Because of nervousness, his body couldn't help but tremble at this time. Although Tony Stark was equally nervous, he still comforted Ethan. Don't worry, we tied a bomb outside the door. If they force their way in, they will be bombed. This may help us delay for a while. Speaking of this, he suddenly remembered something. Didn't you trigger the bomb mechanism outside the door when you came in? Lobai. Tony Stark asked doubtfully. Luobai was silent. After all, he didn't enter through the main entrance at all so of course he wouldn't trigger the mechanism. But before he could explain, he heard a loud boom, and the tranquility of the cave was completely broken. Terrorists broke down the door. The good news is that the terrorist who broke in was killed. The bad news is that this will inevitably alert other terrorists, and they will run out of time. Tony, please stop asking these unimportant questions at this time. We need to buy more time for the armor to activate. Dr. Ethan complained anxiously. Before Tony Stark could answer, Dr. Ethan continued to ask, Lobai, can you help us? What do you need me to do? Luobai asked, a bad premonition welling up in his heart. Sure enough, the next second he heard Ethan calling for help. Then can you help us delay for a while? We need your help. As soon as he finished speaking, Luobai was stunned. What the hell? Let him, a crispy college student, hold back those terrorists carrying machine guns outside. To be honest, Luobai felt that he might not be able to hold it off. But if the steel armor cannot be activated, there is only death waiting for him. Thinking of this, he could only bite the bullet and agree, Okay, what do you need me to do? Let's go out and fight with those terrorists, Dr. Ethan said, with a firm look in his eyes as if he wanted to join the party. Compared with his determination, Luo Bai was much weaker. Then, let's go, Luo Bai replied weakly, and the two of them walked out of the door one after another. When Luo Bai walked outside the door, he found that the door had been blown up, and there were still some bodies with missing limbs lying on the ground. If he hadn't been mentally strong, he would have vomited. Dr. Ethan seems to have become accustomed to staying in the cave for a long time. He calmly walked forward, picked up a usable gun from the body, and handed it to Luo Bai. Here you go. I think you should come in handy. Also, protect yourself. Ethan reminded kindly. Luo Bai said nothing. Although he pretended to be calm on the outside, he was panicking inside. Looking at the gun in his hand, he couldn't help complaining in his mind. No, how on earth do you use this thing? I know a little about guns, but I have never actually fired one. But before he could study it carefully, the terrorists had already entered. Hearing the footsteps and shouts not far away, Dr. Ethan clenched his hands and planned to rush out. While rushing, he discussed with Luobai, They are coming, I will kill them. You cover behind me. 
I. Luo Bai quickly stopped him. Don't go out yet. Dr. Ethan stopped and said anxiously. If we don't go out now, we will be dead when they come in. Luo Bai quickly explained. The entrance to the cave is small and easy to defend but difficult to attack. We will stay here and wait for them to come. Although Ethan looks brave, he is engaged in scientific research after all, and he had never seen such a scene before he was arrested. Like Luo Bai, he had never used a gun, let alone experienced such a thing. I pretended to be calm, but actually I was quite panicked. Perhaps because he felt that what Luo Bai said was reasonable, and that he had experience, he and Luo Bai guarded the door together. After a while, the two saw three or four terrorists armed with machine guns running over. The cave was so narrow that there was almost no place to hide. Luo Bai knew that if the terrorists saw them and shot first, they would be in danger. So when Luo Bai saw the terrorists appearing, he immediately shouted, Shoot! Without waiting for Ethan to react, he fired fiercely at the front. To be honest, before this Luo Bai never thought that he could hit anyone with his gun. After all, this was his first time using a gun, and he wasn't even good at aiming. In addition, it is very dark in the cave, so it is not easy to hit the target. But what he never expected was that just after he fired a few shots, several screams were heard in the cave. All the terrorists fell to the ground, and there was no more sound. In an instant, Luo by himself was stunned. Actually, did it hit? Just as he was thinking about it, Ethan couldn't help shouting excitedly, What a marksmanship! You killed all the enemies before I even reacted? Your marksmanship is so accurate, you must have received professional training, right? Luo Bai didn't answer, but couldn't help but respond silently in his heart. Actually, this is also my first time using a gun. To be honest, even he felt strange. After all, it was my first time to use a gun, and I shot the target four times in a row in such a difficult environment. Who would believe this if you are not a professional? Even Luo Bai was a little puzzled at this moment and couldn't help but think in his mind. Could it be that I am gifted at shooting? But he didn't have much time to think, because the second group of terrorists entered the cave again. Although I don't know how many people came this time, I can tell from the dense footsteps that there are obviously more people coming this time than before. This made Luo Bai panic. After all, no matter how talented he is, this is his first time playing with a gun. Facing so many terrorists, can he really survive? How long will it take for him to start up? Luo Bai couldn't help but ask. He really wanted Tony Stark to come and rescue him now. It will probably take another minute to start. Ethan replied. One minute. By the time he gets better, he will be completely cold. For the first time, Luo Bai felt that one minute was so long. It seems that relying on Tony Stark is impossible. For now, he can only rely on himself. There is no other way. It seems we can only fight. When Ethan sees someone showing up, shoot, but don't hesitate, Luo Bai warned. He held his breath and tightly held the gun in his hand. Hearing the footsteps getting closer and closer, his hand holding the gun became tighter and tighter. At this time, he was so nervous that he didn't dare to take a breath and stared straight ahead for fear of missing something. Until he saw the terrorists appearing in his sight, Luo Bai immediately opened fire and fired straight ahead without saying a word. At the same time, the terrorists also discovered Luo Bai and started shooting at him. Do 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 do. The sound of gunfire echoed in the cave, and bullets were flying randomly among the lightning and flint. In fact, Luo Bai didn't think he had a chance of winning at all. He even felt that as a time traveler, he might have a bad start. So during the shooting process, Luo Bai kept his eyes closed almost the entire time. It wasn't until the last bullet was fired by him that he finally stopped shooting. But at this moment he unexpectedly discovered that he was still alive. Luo Bai opened his eyes in surprise. It was okay if he didn't open his eyes, but Luo Bai was dumbfounded when he opened them. Not far away, there were a bunch of terrorists lying in random directions, and they seemed to have run out of energy. Could it be that he killed all these terrorists? He couldn't help but turn his head to look at Dr. Ethan to ask for confirmation, but at this time the expression on Dr. Ethan's face was even more exciting than him. After sizing him up for a long time, Dr. Ethan asked, So many people shot at you. Were you not injured at all? Injury? Luo Bai checked himself carefully, and after a moment he replied, No, Dr. Ethan. Six. Really six. Dr. Ethan saw the chaotic gun battle just now clearly. Seven or eight terrorists gave Luo Bai a tug of war. In the end, they were all dead, and Luo Bai didn't even scratch his skin. Dr. Ethan himself was shot twice in the arm and leg. Is Luo Bai okay? This is unscientific.
Chapter 003 Dr. Ethan couldn't figure it out. He couldn't figure it out even after thinking about it. You were unscathed? Why? Unable to hold it back, Ethan complained. After finishing speaking, he seemed to realize that this was not a good thing to say, and quickly made up for it. Although I don't want you to get hurt, I am really curious, how did you escape those bullets? I didn't hide. Luobai replied, his face full of sincerity. I didn't hide either, but why was I the only one injured? Ethan couldn't help complaining, with depression written all over his face. In such a chaotic gun battle in such a small space, not only did he kill all the enemies, but he was still unscathed. How on earth is this done? Not only was he confused, even Luo by himself was a little confused. It was such a mess just now. According to common sense, he shouldn't have nothing to do. Thinking of this, he couldn't help but ask, Dr. Ethan, do you think I'm pretty lucky? You are indeed very lucky. Ethan couldn't help but sigh. After all, being able to kill the enemy may be due to good marksmanship, but being able to escape and scathed in this situation can only be said to be good luck. However, Luo Bai was not happy for long, because the battle was not over yet, and there were more terrorists waiting for them. Seeing the people who entered were silent, the terrorists learned a lesson. They no longer arranged for people to enter the cave, but shouted outside, Stark, if you don't come out, we will drop a bomb. The cave is so small, Luo Bai didn't dare to think about it if a bomb was really thrown into it. Fortunately, the steel suit has completed power supply at this time. Seeing Tony Stark walking out of the room wearing a huge amount of steel suit, Dr. Ethan cried with joy and cheered, Finally done! We can leave this place! Because he was so excited, he couldn't help coughing violently after finishing speaking. Sensing his abnormality, Tony Stark couldn't help but ask, Are you injured? Dr. Ethan shook his head and said quickly, A small injury, it doesn't matter. Thank you for delaying my time. Tony Stark said gratefully. Dr. Ethan shook his head and said quickly, It's not me, it's him. It was Luo Bai who helped you delay time. He defeated these terrorists. Luo Bai? Tony Stark was stunned. He turned to look at the terrorist lying on the ground, and then looked at the crispy college student Luo Bai, with a look of surprise on his face. He took out these terrorists all by himself? Tony Stark asked. Yes, he is very powerful, and his shooting skills are very accurate. It can be said that his bullets are flawless. Dr. Ethan praised unabashedly. Tony Stark was confused. A perfect shot? Is it so powerful? Although he was very curious, he didn't have time to ask more questions now. Okay, Lobai, thank you, but we have to get out of here first. Tony Stark said. With the steel suit, it would be much easier for the three of them to leave here. Stark wore a steel suit and fought fiercely with these terrorists. The base camp was almost destroyed by the bombing, and all the remaining terrorists ran away when they saw something was wrong. Taking this opportunity, the three of them left quickly. It's just that Stark's suit was scrapped before he had gone very far. It was probably because the previous fight was too fierce and the improvised suit couldn't withstand it. Fortunately, the plane searching for Stark appeared in time. It wasn't until he got on the plane that Luo Bai's hanging heart finally relaxed. It seems that God still took pity on him and didn't let him fail at the start. But how will he live in the Marvel world next? After all, he doesn't even have a household registration. What a big head. Country M, New York. I don't know how long it took to fly, but the plane finally landed at a military base. As soon as we got off the plane, Tony Stark came up to us. Is your name Luo Bai? Where do you live? I'll have someone take you back? Tony Stark asked. The three of them had just experienced a narrow escape, and Stark no longer had any doubts about Luo Bai. To express his gratitude, he planned to have Luo Bai go home. Unexpectedly, the next second he heard Luo by reply with some frustration. I am here and have no home. He is a time traveler. Where does he have a home in a different world? Tony Stark seemed a little surprised and continued to ask, Don't you have any family? It was there before, but it's gone now. Luo by said. Tony Stark obviously misunderstood something. After a moment of silence, he sighed, What a poor kid. Without waiting for Luo by to explain, he immediately shouted, Pepper. Take him to my apartment to rest. Soon a beautiful blonde came over. I know the blonde beauty Luo by who came here. Pepper Potts, nicknamed Pepper Potts, is Tony Stark's personal secretary. After receiving the boss's arrangement, Xiao Jiao took Luo by into a Bentley. After getting in the car, Pepper immediately expressed her gratitude. I heard that you helped Tony escape. Thank you. Luo by shook his head and responded politely, You're welcome. I just helped you a little. 
I think you are tired. I'll take you to the apartment to rest first. Do you want something to eat? I'll have someone prepare it for you right now. Little Pepper asked. Hot pot. Luo Bai replied after thinking for a while. After narrowly escaping from death, he just wanted to calm down with a hot pot. Although it's a bit troublesome, I can't ask the chef to prepare it for you immediately. Little Pepper said, and then made a phone call to make arrangements. This arrangement lasts only 15 minutes. It wasn't until the car stopped that Pepper quickly got out of the car and opened the door for him. Thank you. Luo Bai thanked him and got out of the car. He was stunned as soon as he got out of the car. Wait, didn't you say apartment? Why did you stop in front of a villa? Tony said that in order to thank you for saving him, I will give you this apartment. I have just arranged for someone to clean the room and the daily necessities have been put in. By the way, here is the key. Pepper said as he spoke. Handed him the key. Only then did Luo by understand what the inhumanity of trench means. Tony just called the villa an apartment and gave it to him so casually. Although he was a little surprised, Luo Bai still pretended to be very calm and took the key and thanked him, then thanked Tony for me. This is all as it should be. Then I will leave Mr. Luo Bai first. If you have any needs, you can call the phone in the room. Little Pepper said goodbye with a smile. Goodbye, Pepper. Luo Bai waved goodbye. After Xiao Jiao left, he couldn't wait to enter the villa. Although Luo Bai's family situation was not bad before time travel, it was not good enough to live in a villa. Especially such a big villa. It looks like it could be used as a hotel. But the location is great. It's only two or three blocks away from the center of New York City. So every inch of land is at a premium. Otherwise, Tony Stark is the top rich man. While sighing with emotion, Luo Bai finished visiting the entire villa. Because he was too tired from walking, he just found a room and lay down. Only then could he finally calm down and think carefully about everything that had happened before. Not only was he able to escape from the terrorist base camp, he was also able to escape without any injuries. Originally, he was worried that he would have no place to live in a place he was unfamiliar with, but Tony gave him a villa. He didn't believe it if he didn't have any luck. I'm so lucky. It would be a pity not to buy a lottery ticket. Luo Bai couldn't help complaining. As soon as he finished speaking, Luo Bai felt something was wrong. Because he found that the picture in front of him suddenly shattered, and the glass-like shattering continued to spread. Until it covered all places, Luo Bai was completely wrapped in a kaleidoscope-like world. What the hell? Luo Bai muttered, and sat up from the bed with a swish. As soon as he stood up, he saw a man wearing a yellow monk's robe and a hood standing in front of him. This man's outfit looks familiar. Luo Bai was thinking, and the next second someone came and took off his hood. A shiny bald head appeared in front of Luo Bai's eyes. Ah, bald. It's the ancient one. Chapter 004 At this moment, Luo Bai was a little panicked, because he knew that the Ancient One would do nothing good if he came to him. Who is the Ancient One? The most powerful Sorcerer Supreme on Earth today, and he is also the Guardian of the Earth, monitoring every move of the Earth all the time. How could a Traveler like him from another world, or a parallel world escape the eyes of the Ancient One? I found you, Multi-Universe Traveler. Just as he was thinking about it, the Ancient One spoke. Luo Bai's hanging heart finally died. The Ancient One came to visit, and it turned out that nothing good happened. If you encounter a big boss at the beginning of a different world, of course you have to give in. I admit that I come from a multi-universe or a parallel world, but I didn't come here voluntarily. I have no ill intentions towards the earth, and I can't go back. Luo Bai explained, with sincerity written all over his face. Ancient One didn't answer, and he didn't know whether she believed it or not. There was no expression on her face at this time. She just stared at Luo Bai with a pair of dark and penetrating eyes. Staring at him made Luo Bai feel scared. I don't know how long it took before the Ancient One finally spoke. I tried to explore your future, but I couldn't see it clearly. So I explored the future of the Earth. I found that with your arrival, the future of the Earth has changed. It makes me curious about the multi-universe traveler. As soon as she said this, Luo Bai became even more nervous. The Earth has changed. Has it changed for the better, or for the worse? Luo Bai asked tentatively. After all, this determines his future destiny, so he must ask clearly. But the Ancient One did not give a definite answer. Instead, he shook his head and replied in confusion, I don't know, but I can't change the future, so I can't put you to any trial. Maybe you need to answer this yourself. After speaking, she took out a book and handed it over. Luo Bing reached out and took the book hesitantly and looked at it. 
The cover of the book is printed with four large characters, the complete collection of the Supreme Being, etc. Isn't this Kamataja's magic book? Why did the Ancient One give it to him? Is this for me? Luobai asked. I borrowed it from you. I hope your arrival will not be a disaster for the earth, but a blessing. Ancient One replied. Before Luo Bai could continue to ask, the mirror space disappeared, along with the Ancient One. Everything around him returned to its original appearance. If it weren't for the fact that Luo Bai was still holding the supreme complete collection in his hand at this time, he would even wonder if he had just had a dream. No, what is going on? The Ancient One didn't expel him just because he was an outsider. Not only was he not expelled, but he was even given a magic book. Is this asking him to practice magic? But he is not a disciple of Kamal Taj either. And what on earth did Ancient One just say about changing the future? Why does this person like to play riddles? At this time, Luo Bai had a lot of questions in his mind, and he couldn't figure them out no matter how hard he thought. But he didn't have a chance to figure it out, because the Ancient One had already left. But looking at the magic book in his hand, Luo Bai was still very happy. After all, what he was most worried about before was how he would survive in such a dangerous world without ability. Well now, Ancient One actually sent him a magic book. This is a great joy. It's just, I heard that Kamataja's magic is not that easy to learn, and it's useless if you don't have enough talent to understand it. Just when I was about to open it to see if I could learn it, the doorbell rang. The hot pot has been delivered. Just right. Then eat hot pot and read a book. After everything was ready, Luobai sat at the dining table, ate hot pot, and turned to the first page of The Complete Collection of Supreme Beings. In fact, he didn't expect to understand the book the first time. The fact is, he really can't understand it. The reason he couldn't understand was, he couldn't understand the words above at all. There were some words that Luo Bai could barely understand, but there were some words that he couldn't understand at all which language they were written in. Luo Bai frowned when he saw it, and could only use high technology to translate. But then he suddenly remembered that he had just traveled through time and had neither a mobile phone nor a computer, and most importantly, no money. In an instant, Luo Bai felt that the hot pot was no longer delicious. Can you believe it when you live in such a big villa and don't have a dime in your pocket? No, he has to find a way to make some money. But he is a gangster. Where can he make money? Just as I was worrying, the doorbell rang again. Luo Bai got up and opened the door. He wasn't surprised when he saw Tony Stark standing outside the door. At present, apart from Pepper Potts and the Ancient One, the only one who knows that he lives here is Tony Stark. How's it going? Are you used to living here? Tony Stark asked as he walked into the house and sat down at the dining table without noticing anything. Luo Bai didn't mind and expressed his gratitude to him by the way. It's very good. Thank you for giving me this apartment. You saved me, so I should give you some compensation. What smells so good? Tony Stark asked, even smelling it hard with his nose. Hot pot. Luo Bai replied. I want to hold a press conference right after I came back from that damn place, and I only ate one cheeseburger during the period. I'm so hungry that my eyes are black now. It's great that you have something to eat. Tony Stark said he took out a pair of clean tableware and started to eat hungrily. While eating, he said, Oh, it tastes so good. I haven't eaten such delicious food for a long time. Is this food from your country? Yes. Luobai nodded. It tastes good, but the knife and fork are a bit hot to use. Take that thing in your hand, right? The chopsticks. Give me a new pair? Tony Stark said. When it comes to chopsticks, Luobai has to admire Xiao Jiao's attentiveness. She even specially sent chopsticks. And there's more than one pair. Otherwise, Luobai wouldn't dare think about eating hot pot with a knife and fork. Here. Luobai handed it over. Seeing Tony Stark being so kind at this time, Luo Bai asked half-jokingly, Since you gave me this apartment, does that mean you no longer doubt my identity? As if thinking that his attitude towards Luo Bai was not very friendly at the beginning, Tony Stark quickly made up for it. The situation was urgent and I was preparing to escape. If you suddenly appeared, I would definitely be more vigilant. Luo Bai nodded to express his understanding, and then asked, Then you come to me now. What's the matter with you? Tony Stark ate several pieces of meat, and then asked doubtfully, I asked Rhodes, and he said you were not sent to save me. The most important thing is that there is no one in the world who can find anything about I'm quite curious about your information. Luo Bai didn't know how to explain, so he could only play the emotional card. At least I saved you, and you actually checked me? Tony Stark shook his head and immediately explained, It's not me, it's Rhodes. 
The fact that I was captured by terrorists has a great impact, so Rhodes and the others will definitely investigate. Not just yours, but everyone's. The information has been investigated. I just asked casually out of curiosity. It seemed that he was thinking of Luo by saying that he had no family, so he did not intend to pursue the matter. He just continued, I have already told them, don't worry, they will not disturb you. It is difficult for you to have no identity here. Life, so I have arranged for someone to apply for your identity. Is this why you came here now to ask me this? Luo Bai asked again. Tony Stark shook his head and extended the invitation. Of course not. I have arranged a party tonight, and I would like to invite you and Ethan to come and relax together, just to celebrate the rest of our lives after the disaster. Are you interested? Although Luo Bai was not very interested in the party, he thought that he might need Tony Stark's help to make money, so he agreed. Good. Then see you at 7 o'clock in the evening. Chapter 005 Tony Stark's private party was held on the top floor of a star hotel. By the time Luo Bai was delivered by special car, it was already overcrowded. Most of the people present were top wealthy people with the same status as Stark, as well as some service staff. Dynamic DJ with dancers, swimming pool, champagne, card table. If not that Tony Stark is a top rich second generation, he still knows how to play. Although Luo Bai had never participated in such an extravagant party, he wasn't particularly excited since he didn't like the excitement. I was just thinking about how to tell Stark that I needed money. Hey boy, here you come? Just as he was worried, a voice came from his ear. Following the sound, Tony Stark was walking towards him happily. Looking at Tony Stark walking towards him, Luo Bai couldn't help but sigh. I really envy you for having so much fun just after escaping from danger. Tony Stark smiled and said, It is precisely because I have just experienced danger that I know how to cherish the present. But you? Why do you look so distressed at such a young age? Well, Luo Bai thought for a long time and was too embarrassed to speak. After all, it is still difficult to ask someone for money. Just when he hesitated, Stark spoke. By the way, Dr. Ethan is playing over there. Let's go find him together. Luo Bai nodded, and then the two of them walked towards Dr. Ethan together. Dr. Ethan was playing cards at this time. Although he was still injured, it did not affect him from having fun. He was so focused that he didn't even notice the two coming. It was Tony Stark who said hello first. Are you having fun, Ethan? Only then did Dr. Ethan notice the two of them and quickly stood up to say hello. Tony Luobai, you are here. Tony Stark glanced at the card table and then said half-jokingly, Caribbean treasures? You can actually play this? I thought you couldn't play this. Dr. Ethan smiled awkwardly and then said, This is indeed my first time playing. Why are you interested in this? Tony Stark asked. Dr. Ethan sighed and responded, I had already thought out my last words when I was in the cave. I didn't even think I could come out alive. Maybe it's because of this experience that I thought about it. I have to try everything. Tony Stark understood his feelings very well. There's nothing wrong with wanting to live a happier life after going through a life or death crisis. Win or lose? Tony Stark asked with a smile. Dr. Ethan replied with some embarrassment. If you lose, you can't understand the game. Tony Stark didn't seem to be surprised and replied very grandly, Have fun, and I'll pay for your loss tonight. Then I have to have fun. Dr. Ethan smiled, then sat down and continued playing cards. Tony Stark and Robin looked on. Needless to say, Dr. Ethan's luck is really bad. The two watched for half an hour, but he didn't win. Since all he lost was Stark's money, Dr. Ethan felt a little embarrassed in the end. No more playing, I lost too much tonight. Dr. Ethan said with a hint of guilt in his tone. Don't worry, it's not much. Tony Stark said casually. Although for him, the money Dr. Ethan lost might not be as good as buying a piece of clothing. But Dr. Ethan still felt guilty and refused to play anymore. Tony Stark didn't force it. He just asked Luo Bai on the side. Do you want to experience it? Even if you lose, I'll pay for it. Luo Bai was stunned. To be honest, he has never played cards in the past 20 years. One is because he is not interested in things like poker and mahjong. The second reason is because he thinks this is completely a game of luck, but his luck has never been particularly good. What's more, Tony Stark's private party was mostly attended by wealthy people, and they were also the top rich. It's called a big one when you play. Just when Dr. Ethan played for a while, he won or lost hundreds of thousands of dollars in half an hour. Luo Bai would definitely not have played at any other time, but he is short of money now. What's more, Tony Stark also said that if he loses, it's his, and if he wins, he can take all the money. 
This made Luobai decide to have a little fun and make some money. Then let me give it a try. Luobai agreed. Although Luobai had never played cards, he almost understood the rules of Caribbean treasure poker after watching it for an hour. To put it bluntly, it's just a matter of luck, who gets the bigger five cards. In fact, Luobai didn't think his luck would be very good, he just wanted to win. What I never expected was that, he won the first place. You're much luckier than Ethan, Tony Stark said with a smile. Maybe it's because Dr. Ethan lost too much before, so the goddess of luck favored me. Luo Bai responded half-jokingly. Dr. Ethan on the side also smiled and agreed. It seems that I sucked away the bad luck. He won a hand at the beginning. No one thought too much, not even Luo by himself. He originally planned to take the money and leave, but it would be a bit disrespectful to leave after winning a lot. So he could only bite the bullet and play for a while longer. Unexpectedly, Luo Bai won again in the second round. Until the next the third, fourth, the last hour passed, and Luo Bai did not lose to everyone before finally realizing that something was not right. You didn't cheat, did you? Tony Stark couldn't help but ask. He couldn't help but look Luo Bai up and down, and it could be seen from his expression that he was surprised. You must know that he was sitting next to Luo Bai just now, staring at him in stunned silence for a whole hour. This guy is so lucky that he seems to be playing tricks, and he has never lost a single game. Although he knew that Luo Bai was definitely not a cheater, it was a bit exaggerated that he had never lost. Not to mention he was surprised. Even Luo Bai was a little surprised at his luck at this time. How could he not realize that he was so lucky? This made Luo Bai sigh. I didn't expect it either. I seem to be quite lucky. In fact, until now, everyone only thinks that Luo Bai is lucky. Although I was surprised, it had only been an hour after all. It's not impossible to have good luck at the beginning but lose all the time later. Until another hour, two hours, three hours, the last four hours passed, everyone finally realized something was wrong, something very wrong. No, you're here to get the goods, right? Not to lose. All one and gone? Brother, you are somewhat exaggerating. How lucky are you? There are hundreds of millions of points respectively. Chapter 006 Looking at the stack of chips in front of Luo Bai's table, Tony Stark and Ethan were both shocked beyond words. Brother, if I hadn't been watching over here, I would have definitely suspected that you were cheating. Can you explain to me how you did it? Tony was stunned for a full minute. Stark finally couldn't help but complain. Exaggeration, really too exaggerated. For four hours, Luo Bai never lost. If you ask the gambling king to come, you can't do it without being a cheat. If it weren't for Tony Stark's sake, those people playing cards with Luo Bai would probably be ready to search him to see if he had hidden cards. I didn't expect. My luck seems to be a little bit better. Luo Bai muttered softly. To be honest, he was a little confused at this moment. Although he has always had a vague feeling that he has been surprisingly lucky since he came to the Marvel world, he was not particularly sure before. It wasn't until after these four hours that Luo Bai became somewhat certain. He is just lucky, and very lucky. He was able to win for four hours in a row playing this kind of purely luck-based game of file-size poker, which he really wouldn't have been able to do if it wasn't for his incredible luck. Your luck is simply unscientific. Just as he was thinking about it, Dr. Ethan couldn't help but sigh. Luo Bai smiled sheepishly. After all, he didn't expect that he was so lucky. Could it be that he actually has a hidden cheat and is extremely lucky? Tony, if I win so much money from your friends, they won't have any objections. Luo Bai asked symbolically. Tony Stark shrugged and said, It doesn't matter if they have opinions, but your luck has opened my eyes today. Have you always been so lucky? No, but I've been pretty lucky recently. Luo Bai answered truthfully. That? Tony. Tony Stark seemed to be about to ask something else, but a voice interrupted him. Looking along the sound, a burly bald man walked over. The bald Luo Bai who came here looked familiar. His name is Obadiah Staney, and he is a shareholder of Stark Industries. At this time, he seemed to be in a hurry. He didn't even say hello to Luo Bai and Ethan, but walked straight to Stark. Listen, Tony, you can't decide to close the weapons manufacturing department alone. You will bring huge amounts of losses to Stark Industries, Obadiah said, with a bit of toughness in his tone. Stark didn't seem surprised by his arrival or what he had to say. Aren't you at the press conference this afternoon? Tony Stark asked. I was here, but you didn't discuss it with me. Obadiah said angrily. I've already told you. 
The terrorists who captured me used weapons manufactured by Stark Industries. Do you understand? My original intention of manufacturing weapons is to fight crime and fight back, not to help criminals. Tony Stark was very answer carefully. Fighting criminals? Tony, we're businessmen. Maybe I used to be a businessman, but now I'm not. Is it possible you want to be a hero, Tony? Isn't it possible? Tony, you are so unreasonable. Obadiah cursed and left angrily. It was obvious that the two had not reached an agreement. Watching the back of Tony Stark leaving, the joy on Tony Stark's face disappeared and was replaced by seriousness. Tony, are you in any trouble? Ethan asked from the side. The first thing I did when I returned to New York was to hold a press conference to announce that Stark Industries would shut down the weapons manufacturing department indefinitely. However, shareholders have some objections to this, so it is not a problem. Tony Stark explained. I heard. I'm surprised you would make such a decision. Ethan sighed with emotion. Nothing surprising, Tony Stark said. He didn't know what he was thinking about. After a while, he suddenly said goodbye. It's getting late. I'll leave first. I wish you all a good time. This surprised everyone. I looked at the time. It was about 11 o'clock in the evening. Ethan asked curiously. I thought that with your personality, you would have to play until at least the early morning before leaving. You were leaving at around 11 o'clock? Tony Stark smiled and sighed. This party today is just for you to have a carnival. I originally planned to say hello to you and leave, but I didn't expect Luo Bai's luck. It really surprised me. So I controlled you for four hours and wasted your time? Luo Bai asked half-jokingly. Tony Stark shook his head and said with a smile, It's not a delay. I just plan to go back and study steel armor. Is that the device we made in the cave today? Ethan asked. Yeah. Tony Stark nodded in response. The materials and time in the cave are limited. I can make a better one. Okay, I'll play for a while and then leave. Ethan said. Just like that, Tony Stark left first. Ethan stayed at the party and continued to party. As for Luobai, although Ethan enthusiastically invited himself to stay and continue playing, he still chose to leave. After all, Luobai came here originally to resolve money matters. Now that the matter was resolved, he naturally wanted to go back and study the magic book. Before going home, Luobai went to exchange his chips. It's not that he didn't know. After doing the calculation, he realized that he had made a total of 3 million US dollars. This was the result of those rich people realizing something was wrong, but because Tony Stark couldn't just leave, they restrained themselves. If you were to play normally, I'm afraid it would be more than that. Although for those rich people, more than 3 million is nothing at all. But for Luo Bai currently, this is already considered a huge sum of money. Tony Stark seemed to have expected that he would earn so much, and he probably couldn't take it all, so he said hello early in the morning. After taking some cash for personal use, Luo Bai exchanged the remaining money for checks. Once the money is in place, the next step will be easier. He randomly found a store that was open and bought a computer and a mobile phone. When Luo Bai got home, he began to focus on reading the Supreme Complete Collection. A computer translated the text in the book, and this time he was finally able to understand what was written in the Supreme Complete Collection. Starting from the first chapter, it introduces the origin of magic, the relationship between human body and magic, basic knowledge of magic and how to practice magic. There is a lot of content in the book, and it even contains biology, geography, mathematics, and many other knowledge. If he hadn't known that this was a magic book, Luo Bai would have thought he was reading some textbook. Although writing was quite boring, he still bit the bullet and continued reading seriously. As he looked at him, he noticed something was wrong. His body seemed to have been suddenly pressed on a start switch, and it was slowly absorbing energy from the outside world. This situation, according to the book, it means that he has officially started magic practice. Chapter 007 As described in the book, as long as you can understand the relationship between the human body and magic, you can start the practice of magic. Don't look at what the book says is simple, but in reality it's not simple at all. After all, according to Luo Bai's knowledge, on Earth in the Marvel world, all white magic learned by humans was created by this Han Emperor. If humans want to learn white magic, they must borrow energy from Emperor Weishan for practice. Although it is a loan, not everyone can borrow it. You must have at least some magical talent to successfully borrow energy. I didn't expect that I was actually good enough to be a mage. Luo Bai couldn't help but sigh when he felt the energy flowing through his body, his face full of surprise that he couldn't hide. Originally, he was worried that he didn't have magic talent, but he didn't expect that he actually had talent. 
This made Luo Bai very happy, and he became more motivated to learn. Although the previous content of The Supreme Complete Collection looks like a science textbook, it contains a lot of knowledge and even talks about science with you. But the more you read the later content, the more exciting it becomes. Because those are all solid magic teachings. What about invisibility, energy projection, penetrating objects, telekinesis, teleportation, space teleportation, etc.? There are more than a hundred methods of learning white magic recorded. Luo Bai couldn't help but sigh. Good guy. I just told you to believe in science, but I didn't even bother to install it anymore. I just teleported through space. Master F.A. knows how to play. While sighing, Luo Bai started learning magic. At the beginning, he must have started with the most basic thing, which is energy gathering. Generally speaking, the first step for a mage to practice is energy absorbing. At this time, the energy is just a ball of chi flowing through your body. You may be able to feel it, but cannot use it. Energy gathering refers to gathering and controlling this mass of energy. According to the instructions in the book, Luo Bai needs to concentrate and release the energy in his body. Although he knew every word and obeyed them obediently, but after trying several times in a row, let alone energy, he didn't even fart. This made Luo Bai a little distressed and couldn't help but mutter, Why can't I gather the energy? Is it because I don't concentrate enough? After staring at his empty hands for a long time, Luo Bai suddenly realized something. No, ancient one, you gave me the magic book. What the hell are you going to do if you don't give me the hanging ring? Hanging ring. Kamataja's magical weapon was developed by the fifth generation supreme mage. Its function is to help the mage concentrate better and to open teleportation gates and cross-dimensional teleportation. Simply put, it is easier for the mage to concentrate with it. But ancient one didn't give him such an important thing. I didn't even give you the Xian Ring. You want me to practice hard. Luo Bai couldn't help complaining. At this time he was a little annoyed. Why didn't you think of asking Ancient One for a hanging ring before? Ancient One is now 80% in Kamal Taj. That place was far away from him, and it was impossible to find the Ancient One. It seemed that he could only practice hard. With a sigh, Luo Bai started the long road of cultivation. Because he was too focused on practicing. I don't know how long it took for Luo Bai to practice before he was finally able to gather and control energy. Close your hands, then open them. Small, bright yellow energy rays appeared between Luo Bai's hands. As he turned his hands over, the tiny energy rays expanded into a square. Take a deep breath. Luo Bai continued to imagine the appearance of light in his mind while turning his hands, but within a moment the energy array appeared in the air. Then he pushed the magic circle forward with both hands to spread out. After completing the gathering of the energy array, Luo Bai repeated the same action again. With the continuous gathering and control of energy, the energy in Luo Bai's body is constantly increasing, and at the same time, he is becoming more and more skilled in controlling energy. From the beginning, the energy formation could only appear for about a minute, then lasted for 10 minutes, and finally he could control the duration of the energy formation at will. Luo Bai spent another whole day. After making sure that he had complete control over this technology, Luo Bai decided to learn the second ability. Teleportation magic, the door of secrets. Right. It's the teleportation magic that allows anyone and anything to be teleported to a designated location at will by drawing a yellow circle in the air. In fact, teleportation magic is just a relatively basic white magic of Karmatage, but Luo Bai has always heard of this magic. He often sees it on TV. So he was still very excited at this moment. After carefully reading the practice method, Luo Bai suddenly realized it. In fact, the practice method is not complicated. As long as you think about the teleportation location in your mind, and then open the teleportation gate, the teleportation can be completed. But the trouble is, this requires the user to have strong control capabilities, and also requires the user to know some basic space magic. Otherwise, there will be many situations such as the teleportation location being inaccurate, the teleportation gate not being able to open, or the teleportation gate closing quickly. For Luo by now, it is definitely impossible to perfectly open the portal, so he can only practice more, alas, Luo by side again, and continue to practice. I don't know how many days have passed since this practice. Although Luo by failed most of the time, he did not give up. He tried to concentrate and then drew a circle with his right hand, and repeated the same action, constantly concentrating, until a yellow circle appeared in the sky, and the circle became bigger and bigger. Finally, Luo by succeeded. He excitedly walked to the other side of the portal but unexpectedly found, the teleportation location seemed a little different from what he thought. Originally, 
he was thinking of teleporting to Kamatosh. After all, he really wanted to go to Ancient One and ask why he gave him the book, The Complete Collection of Supreme Beings, and also asked if he could give him a hanging ring. Result. It seems that he did not go to Karmataj, but teleported to a rooftop. And by coincidence, he happened to see the scene where Tony Stark was beaten. At this time, Tony Stark was wearing the red steel suit he had just developed. Opposite him stood a man also wearing a black steel suit. The two seemed to have just experienced a fierce battle, and Tony Stark obviously couldn't win. He was being lifted up in the air like a chicken by a man wearing a black steel suit. Just as the man was about to punch Tony Stark in the face, Lobai appeared. This appearance attracted the attention of the two people. Luo Bai thought about leaving quickly. But because the portal was not opened skillfully, the control was not good enough. The portal closed before he could walk through it. Luo Bai. His face darkened. I could only say hello bravely. Hi, Tony I think. I may have shown up at the wrong time. Chapter 008 Luobai also didn't expect that he could open the portal so far. He originally wanted to drive to Karmataj, but he actually drove in front of Tony Stark. It's really surprising that this is when Tony Stark is still fighting against the villains. But isn't he unlucky? Why did he get involved in danger again? He was not the only one who was surprised at this time. Tony Stark was also surprised. He was confused when he saw Luo by appearing out of thin air again. Lobai, where did you suddenly appear from? Tony Stark asked as he opened the steel helmet and revealed his face. Well, it was an accident this time. Luo Bai replied helplessly. Accident? Tony Stark asked in confusion. Although Luo Bai also wanted to explain the current situation to him. But seeing that he was being carried, Luo Bai couldn't help but complain. These problems must at least wait until you are safe. Let's talk about it. After being reminded, Tony Stark finally remembered his situation and the man in the black steel suit finally came to his senses. He stared at Luo Bai and asked in a ferocious tone, I remember you. Your name is Luo Bai, right? You were the one who helped Tony escape from the cave. Before Luo Bai could answer, Tony Stark hurriedly said, This is the grudge between us and has nothing to do with him. You still have time to take care of others? Take care of yourself first, Tony, the man in the black steel suit said angrily. Then he punched Tony Stark with an iron fist sending Stark flying away. Snap! Accompanied by a loud bang, Tony Stark flew out like a bowling ball and then hit the wall hard. Although he shouldn't die wearing the steel suit at this time, Luo Bai couldn't help but ask after hearing the huge amounts of noise, Tony, are you okay? Tony Stark didn't reply immediately, it seemed because he was seriously injured. Fortunately, after a while, he responded, I can't die for the time being. Tony Stark stood up as he spoke. Although he had many questions to ask Luo Bai, he also knew that now was not the time. A lot of things have happened in the past few days. I will tell you the specific things when the time comes. Now you have to get out of here. Tony Stark said hurriedly. As soon as he finished speaking, Luo Bai immediately replied, Okay, then I'll leave first. You be careful, Tony. Tony Stark was stunned by this straightforward answer. Although he knew that the situation was critical and hoped that Luo Bai could leave quickly, he really didn't expect that Luo Bai would agree so simply. I thought you would at least shirk it, but I didn't expect you to agree so simply. Aren't we friends? Tony Stark complained half-jokingly. Although Luo Bai pretended to be calm on the surface, he responded with a smile. I don't believe you can solve it yourself, but I was muttering in my heart. I'm not stupid. Why don't you run away if it's so dangerous? What's more, you can't die even if you have a steel suit. Although Tony Stark did not explain the current situation, he had already guessed it in his mind. Based on known plot, after Tony Stark escaped from terrorists using the steel suit Mark I he made, he always wanted to develop a more powerful steel suit. So Mark II and Mark III were born. As a result, Tony Stark truly became Iron Man and appeared in Country M wearing an iron suit, attracting the attention of all parties. Obadiah, who has always wanted to monopolize Stark Industries, noticed the appearance of the steel suit and cooperated with terrorists to secretly research the suit. In the end, he successfully created the steel suit, Iron Overlord, and became a supervillain in the Marvel world. After that, Obadiah and Tony Stark started the final battle. If Luo Bai guessed correctly, the man wearing a black steel suit at this time should be Obadiah. After understanding the current situation, Luo Bai naturally had no reason to stay here. After all, this was an internal conflict within Stark Industries, and it was not easy for him as an outsider to intervene. Although Tony Stark had a good relationship with him, 
It was not impossible for him to do a favor as a friend. But the steel suit Obadiah wore was a high-tech weapon. Not only can it launch machine guns, six-shot missiles, and anti-tank rockets, it can even fly at high speeds because it is equipped with rocket propulsion. Luo Bai is a novice mage. Let him resist missile attacks. This is too much. This is really too much. He still wants to survive and grow. Who knows how long Lady Luck will protect him. Thinking of this, Luo Bai immediately decided to open the portal and leave. He concentrated on imagining the appearance of the villa in his mind, and then began to draw circles on his hands. Seeing that they seemed to be preparing to leave, Obadiah roared, You want to run away? You both have to die here. After saying this, he raised his steel right hand towards Luo Bai and prepared to fire the machine cannon. Although Tony Stark complained about Lo Bai's lack of loyalty before, it was a joke. Seeing that he was in danger, he immediately pounced on him without thinking. Originally, he wanted to help Luo Bai buy time, so that Luo Bai could leave as soon as possible. But Obadiah researched and upgraded Tony Stark's steel suit when he was making Iron Overlord. So the performance of Iron Overlord is much more advanced than Mark III in all aspects. Tony Stark's suit was unable to withstand the attack of the Iron Overlord at all. After being hit by a machine cannon, he completely lost his combat effectiveness. Looking at Tony Stark lying on the ground unable to move, Obadiah showed a winner's smile on his face. You seem to care about this kid named Luobai? Then I'll let him go to hell with you. No need to thank me, Obadiah said with a smile. At this time, he was already crazy. He's innocent. Obadiah. Tony Stark roared. He wanted to stop it, but he couldn't. He could only shout, go. But at this time, Luo Bai's attention was focused on opening the portal, and he didn't even hear Tony Stark's reminder. When using magic energy, you must be highly concentrated, especially since Luo Bai is only a novice mage, so he is naturally more focused. Fortunately, with the previous successful experience and because of the danger, the portal was opened very successfully this time. Although it took a little time, it was much smoother than before. At the moment when the portal was successfully opened, Luo Bai heard a shout from behind him, Be careful! Then a black shadow quickly flashed past Luo Bai's eyes and entered the portal. Luo Bai was stunned. I was about to check what things slipped into the portal, but I didn't expect that the portal had disappeared in the moment I was distracted. Luo Bai, Tony Stark. At this time, both Luo Bai and Tony Stark were a little confused. Did a big black mouse get in just now? Luo Bai asked. Um, it's Obadiah. Tony Stark replied, with a bit of confusion in his tone. So why did he get into the portal? Luo Bai asked again in confusion. Tony Stark replied with a slightly confused tone. I don't know, he just wanted to attack you. But for some reason, he disappeared directly. Tony Stark's tone was a bit strange, and the expression on his face was very wonderful. He didn't seem to have fully recovered, but Luo Bai figured it out. So just now when he was concentrating on opening the portal, Obadiah wanted to sneak attack him. As a result, Lady Luck showed her power and sent Obadiah into the portal. TSK, TSK. He is the son of Luck. Is it so easy to be attacked? Chapter 009 Luo Bai was a little lucky. Fortunately, the goddess of luck did not give up on him and saved him at the critical moment. Therefore, Luo Bai was even a little happy, with a smile on his face. But Tony Stark couldn't laugh at this moment and asked with a shocked face, Wait a minute, why did Obadiah disappear? He really couldn't understand why such a big Obadiah suddenly disappeared. He got into the portal by himself and was sent away. Luo Bai explained, Portal? What is that? Tony Stark asked, his brows frowning even more. The secret door is the magic of space teleportation. Luo Bai continued to explain. Although he said it lightly, Tony Stark couldn't calm down at all. Magic? Are you kidding me? Tony Stark exclaimed, almost screaming. Luo Bai asked back very calmly and seriously, Do you think I'm joking? Although it is somewhat unbelievable. Thinking back to Obadiah's sudden disappearance just now, even if it was hard to believe, Tony Stark had to believe it. To be honest, I have only seen magic on TV before. Magic actually exists in this world. This is unscientific. Tony Stark exclaimed again, his mouth wide open. In fact, the Marvel world has never been a normal urban world. There are many mages, superability people, and the like. However, it is normal for Tony Stark, as an ordinary human being, not to understand these supernatural phenomena. Thinking of this, Luo Bai couldn't help but reply, that's because you still know too little about this world. 
Tony Stark's face turned dark and he replied in disbelief. It's hard for me to imagine that it's you who said this to me. You look 10 years younger than me. Come on, Luo Bai looks like a college student. He is over 30, being complained by a college student about how little he knows about the world. It's hard to accept though. But looking at it now, he really doesn't know much. So you always appear inexplicably. And it's because of this magic? Tony Stark asked. Well, more or less. Luo Bai replied. After all, he had no better reason to explain. So, you are actually a mage? Tony Stark asked again. Luo Bai nodded and said seriously, Yes, I am the mage. Tony Stark remained silent, his eyes filled with shock and disbelief. I don't know how long it took before he finally came to his senses and asked a key question. So, where did you just use magic to teleport Obadiah to? Will he come back again? Where was it sent? Luo Bai was stunned. To be honest, he actually doesn't know very well. After all, he just wanted to go home when he opened the portal. So he decided to locate the villa. But because he was not yet proficient in the use of teleportation magic, Luo Bai noticed when the teleportation gate opened just now. It didn't seem like there was a villa behind the teleportation gate, but a strange place. But before he could take a closer look at where he had opened the portal, Obadiah rushed in. Where were they sent? Luo Bai was puzzled. At the same time, the main palace of Kamal Taj, the Ancient One and Obadiah, are glaring at each other. The two were silent for about five seconds before Obadiah Rage spoke up, Shet, where is this? Where is Tony? Where has he gone? This is Karma Taj. Tony Stark is in New York at this time. Ancient One replied calmly, Karma Taj? What the hell is that place? Obadiah Rage asked. Ancient One still replied calmly and indifferently, Karma Taj is located in Kathmandu and is a magical holy land. Magic holy land? Are you kidding me? I was in New York just now, and now you say I'm in Nepal? Obadiah spoke in disbelief, with disbelief written all over his face. You know, a second ago he was fighting with Tony Stark. Then the next second a bald man appeared and said he had come to Kathmandu, the capital of Nepal? What kind of magic are you telling him? Can he believe it? I know, you are with Tony and that boy Luobai. I didn't expect Tony to have so many helpers. Then I will deal with you, the bald head, first, and then kill Tony. Go to hell, bald head. Obadiah cursed. After saying that, he raised his steel arm and prepared to fire the machine cannon towards the Ancient One. But don't wait for him to fire. The Ancient One raised his hand and struck Obadiah's steel armor with a palm. The next second Obadiah's soul separated from his body and floated in the sky. OMG. Me? Obadiah was completely stunned. No? Is he dead? How come? He ascended to heaven. Who are you? What's wrong with me? Obadiah said in surprise. Originally, he thought that he would be invincible after possessing the Iron Overlord. Unexpectedly, I met a god. His soul was taken out with one palm. Obadiah was completely panicked now. Only then did he finally realize how terrifying the bald head in front of him was. This is the supreme mage of Karma Taj. Modu, who was standing nearby, walked up and answered. Supreme mage? No way. Did he meet a real mage? So how did I get here? Obadiah asked without tears. After all, he was really confused. But how he came here, even Modu didn't know very well. You seem to have been teleported here. But who will teleport you to Kamataj? Morda muttered. He seemed to be answering Obadiah's words, but it was more like he was talking to himself. Really confused, he looked at Ancient One. Ancient One still had no expression on his face, as if he already knew the answer. It's Luo Bai. Ancient One answered. Luo Bai? That's the college student who followed Tony? He's also a mage? Obadiah asked, with a bit of surprise in his tone. Yes. Ancient One nodded and said, although he has not undergone formal training, it seems that he has indeed become a mage. Obadiah was silent. He was still a little shocked at this time. No, Luo Bai seems to be just a crispy college student, but he is also a mage. Certainly. He was not the only one who was shocked. Imo Du was also a little surprised. Luo Bai? I have never heard of the name you just mentioned, Supreme Mage, Modu said curiously. As Kamataja's senior brother and the first disciple of the Ancient One, he knows all the newly admitted mages. After all, his current main responsibility is to train new mages. But the strange thing is that he has never heard of a mage named Luo Bai in Kamataj. Ancient One soon gave the answer, he was an accident. 
so I didn't take him back to Kamataj, but gave him a book to study by himself. I wanted to verify something. When Imodu heard this, he was stunned. Supreme Mage, you mean, he learned magic by himself? Modu asked in surprise. Ancient One nodded and said, Yes, and it only took about a week. What the hell? He taught himself teleportation magic in just about a week? This is genius. Chapter 010 If Ancient One hadn't said this himself, Modu would have really not believed that someone could learn teleportation magic in such a short time. As an archmage, Modo knew very well how difficult magic was to learn. Although Kamataj has always believed in teaching without discrimination, the prerequisite is that you can find Kamataj. Most people without magical talent cannot even find the door to Kamataj. Therefore, the mages who can find and enter Kamataj usually have certain magical talents, and there are also outstanding ones with very high talents. As the first disciple of the Ancient One, Modu basically witnessed the growth of all the mages of Kamataj. Although teleportation magic is only a basic magic, it is not that easy to learn. Luo Bai learned it in a week without any guidance. What kind of fairy is this? And this doesn't seem to be the crux of the problem. The key is that Modu noticed that Kamataj's hanging ring didn't seem to be missing. Magical weapons are very important to mages, so as a senior brother, Modu often counts whether Kamaltaj's magical weapons are lost, but there are a lot of hanging rings recently. Thinking of this, Modu couldn't help but ask, Supreme Mage, did you give him a hanging ring? Ancient One shook his head and said, No. Mordo was silent. The expression on his face at this time was wonderful. No one teaches, no precepts. I'm afraid this Kamataj is going to become a god. Although Mordu didn't say anything and just showed shock on his face, Ancient One could completely understand why he was so shocked. After all, Ancient One, whose face has always been expressionless, rarely showed a bit of surprise. His talent has exceeded my imagination. Ancient One sighed. Mordo nodded in agreement, but he didn't understand. Since his talent is so high, Master Supreme, why don't you bring him back to Kamataj? Modu asked. Ancient One did not answer, but just asked, Do you remember the abnormality detected on Earth before? Mordo replied respectfully, Remember, the temple has detected an intrusion. It seems that they are travelers from the multi-universe. Ancient One frowned and then explained slowly. I have explored the future. Logically speaking, this invader should not have appeared, but he did. This forced me to explore the future again, only to find that the future of the Earth has been changed. This invader has been recorded in Earth time. I'm curious about the identity of this intruder, but I can't see his future clearly. I can only use the future of the Earth to detect the time and events when he occasionally appears. Ancient One stopped when he said this, not knowing what he was thinking. Modu knew that he shouldn't ask too many questions, but he couldn't help but be curious. After hesitating for a while, he asked cautiously, Supreme Mage, is the intruder you just mentioned Luobai? Ancient One nodded. So Master Supreme, what did you see? Modu asked again. The Ancient One did not hide anything and answered truthfully. I saw him become the Supreme Mage. Modu suddenly realized. He was not surprised by this future. Originally, the four words, Supreme Mage, represented the strongest mage. Luo Bai's talent is so terrifying, it is only a matter of time before he becomes the supreme mage. After all, no matter how hard you try, you can't overcome other people's talents. Thinking of this, Modu couldn't help but sigh. Luo Bai's talent is so high, it is normal for him to become the supreme mage in the future. As soon as he finished speaking, Ancient One shook his head and denied, No, this is not normal. Modu was puzzled and asked, I don't understand. Why is this abnormal? Ancient One explained. According to the original future, Doctor Strange should be the Supreme Mage. Before Mordo could speak again, Ancient One continued to explain. This has never happened before for the future to be changed, but I have no way of knowing how he became the Supreme Mage. I can only roughly guess. He is talent and quality in all aspects far exceed Strange. That's why you left him a magic book to study on his own because you wanted to test his talent, right? Mordu asked following the Ancient One's words. Ancient One nodded and gave an affirmative answer. When she discovered that Luo Bai would become the future Supreme Mage, she knew that she could no longer expel this invader from the Earth, because she can't change the future. Since you can't change, you can only adapt and find answers. In fact, when Ancient One first went to find Luo Bai, she just had some guesses in her mind, guessing that Luo Bai's talent would be very good. 
but she didn't expect Luo Bai's talent to be so good. Even she was a little surprised. Without the help of magical weapons and no one's guidance, Luo Bai can open the portal with just a copy of the complete collection of the Supreme? This talent is simply amazing. But what about Strange? Forget it. Leave Strange alone. Supreme Mage, do you need me to take him back to Karmitage for training? Just as he was thinking about it, Modu suddenly asked. Now that it has been proven that Luo Bai is extremely talented, it has also been proven that he may be the Supreme Mage in the future. Modu was naturally wondering whether he should come forward to invite this godman back, so as to save the Supreme Mage from having to make another trip. But Ancient One seems to have his own plan. No need for now, wait a moment. Ancient One said. She wanted to see how strong Luo Bai's talent was, so it wasn't too late to bring it back after Luo Bai finished learning the entire Supreme Complete Collection. What's more, the mage originally needs to go out to practice, so it is good to let him practice outside for a while. Two mages, can you look at me? Ancient One and Modu were discussing the matter of Luo Bai, and Obadiah couldn't help but speak. At this time he was very panicked. After all, he has been left here for a long time, listening to several masters talking about the Supreme Master, the future, and so on. The more I listened, the more I became afraid. Especially since he was in a state where his soul had left the body and could not return, he was even more panicked. You said it was not good for him to offend anyone, but he actually offended Master? Thinking of this, Obadiah begged without tears, Can you let my soul go back to my body first? His words attracted the attention of Ancient One and Mordo. As if considering that he was not suitable in Kamataj, Modu asked, Supreme Mage, how should he deal with it? Exile your soul. Ancient One answered directly without thinking. When Obadiah heard this, he panicked and shouted, What does soul banishment mean? Before he could finish speaking, Imodu cast a spell and disappeared into the main hall. After dealing with Obadiah, Mordo was ready to leave. Supreme Mage, I'll leave first. As soon as he finished speaking, the Ancient One said, Later, go to Luo Bai and give him the hanging ring. I will give you the address. Modu nodded and said, Okay, Supreme Mage. Chapter 011 New York, on a rooftop somewhere. Tony Stark frowned and asked very seriously, So Robin, you don't know where you sent Obadiah? Luo Bai shook his head and replied with a slightly helpless tone, I don't know. Hearing that he was not very sure, Tony Stark couldn't help but feel worried. After all, Obadiah seems to be crazy now, and it would be bad if he causes trouble in New York. Thinking of this, Tony Stark quickly said, Jarvis, search the entire city for Obadiah's location to see if you can find it. Jarvis, artificial intelligence steward. It is a program implanted into the iron suit by Tony Stark and has many functions, including positioning. After receiving the order, Jarvis immediately started the citywide positioning, and soon it gave a reply, I'm sorry, Mr. Stark, Obadiah's location was not found in New York City. After hearing this, Tony Stark couldn't help complaining. It seems that he is no longer in New York. Did you send him so far away? Luo Bai shrugged and replied calmly, This, who knows? Tony Stark was still worried before. After learning that Obadiah was no longer in New York, he finally breathed a sigh of relief. He just wanted to occupy Stark Industries. Now that he is no longer in New York, he should be at peace for a while. Thank you for saving me again. Sitting on the ground, Tony Stark thanked him with a tired face. He was really tired from the fight just now. He thought he was already very powerful just by making Mark III, but he didn't expect Obadiah to actually create a more powerful suit than him, which made him feel a little unconvinced. The man you sent away just now, his name is Obadiah. He is my father's partner. He came to look for me at the party before, you should have seen him, Tony Stark said. Well, I've seen it before. What's wrong? Luo Bai asked. Tony Stark explained angrily. I told you at the party that he did not agree with me closing the weapons department, but I didn't expect that he was secretly researching the steel suit and creating an upgrade for my suit. Version. But when it comes to the iron suit, the anger on Tony Stark's face disappears, replaced by pride and excitement. A lot of things have happened in the past few days while you were away. For example, what I am wearing is my newly developed Mark III. Isn't it much more handsome than the one made in the cave? Tony Stark showed off. He even stood up on purpose to show Luo by the entire appearance of Mark III. Seeing him showing off so hard, Luo by naturally gave him a lot of face. It does look much more advanced. Luo by nodded in praise. Tony Stark was so pleased with the compliment that he replied arrogantly. That's natural in order to make Mark III, 
I didn't sleep for several days. In fact, Mark III has many functions, do you want to see? He seems to intend to show Luo Bai all aspects of Mark III's function. Kaluo Bai is a time traveler. He has even seen the nano suit created by Tony Stark in the future, let alone Mark III. Considering that he had to learn magic as soon as possible to improve his strength, Luo Bai quickly interrupted him. It's too late today. I'll go back if I have something else to do. Let's talk about these things another day. After saying that, he raised his hand and opened the portal without waiting for Tony Stark's reaction. Since he had successfully opened two teleportation gates before, Luo Bai had gained a lot of proficiency. The location opened this time was right, it happened to be his villa. Seeing that the position was correct, Luo Bai nodded with satisfaction, then waved goodbye. Bye, Tony. As the portal closed, Tony Stark was left alone on the roof, messy in the wind. I don't know how long it took before Tony Stark couldn't help but sigh. Is this the strength of a mage? Seriously. Although he had seen Luo Bai open the portal and teleport Obadiah away before, he would still be shocked when he saw him again. This magic is so useful. He originally thought that if he made a steel suit that could fly and fire cannonballs, he would be very powerful. As a result, Luo Bai's magic looks cooler than his suit. In an instant, Tony Stark felt that Mark III was no longer good. There is magic in this world, and there are mages. Oh my god, this is crazy. No, I have to upgrade my suit. While Tony Stark was still standing there sighing, Luo Bai had already returned to the villa and started learning magic. Although he had just learned teleportation magic not long ago. But after the battle, just now, Luo Bai unexpectedly found that he was very familiar with the teleportation magic. He tried it several times in a row without making any mistakes. This proves that he has complete control over teleportation magic. This made him a little excited. Otherwise, fighting is the best way to improve your strength. He practiced teleportation magic at home for so long before he barely learned teleportation magic. After experiencing danger, he mastered it in an instant. In fact, Luo Bai was worried at first. After all, if he had really activated the lucky plugin, he shouldn't have been in danger just now. He had only learned basic magic for a few days, and with this level of strength, it was impossible for him to defeat Obadiah wearing the Iron Overlord. But not only did he leave unharmed, he actually improved his strength. So he didn't accidentally enter a dangerous situation just now. He was clearly arranged by the Goddess of Luck to go into actual combat. And not just this time. Luo Bai discovered that every so-called danger he encountered was actually not a danger. Although he was in the terrorist base camp, when he first traveled through time, he also met the top rich man Tony Stark. He can now live in a big villa, but it is also inseparable from Tony Stark's help. No wonder I learned magic so quickly. It can be said that I am gifted. Goddess of luck, help me with my feelings. Luo Bai muttered. After all, there are many people with magic talents. But if you want to have top-level magic talents, you can't do it without a little luck. Thinking of this, Luo Bai felt more and more that he had lived up to the blessing of the Goddess of Luck and immediately prepared to finish studying the Supreme Complete Collection as soon as possible. Unexpectedly, the doorbell rang at this moment and Luo Bai had to get up and speak. As soon as the door opened, he saw a young man wearing monk's robes standing outside his door. Hello, is this Luo Bai's house? The young man asked with a smile. Who are you? Luo Bai asked. My name is Modu. The young man introduced himself. Luo Bai suddenly realized when he heard this. No wonder he said they look so similar. It's really Modu. But why did he come to find me? Where is the ancient one? Somewhat curious, Luo Bai asked. I am Luo Bai. Why did you come to see me? Modu didn't say anything, but just handed something over. What was handed over was Kamataja's magic weapon, the hanging ring. Chapter 012. In fact, through this period of learning magic, Luo Bai has discovered that he has extraordinary talents. He can basically understand and learn the magic in the complete collection of Supreme Masters after reading it once. In the past, the portal always opened sideways because he was new to learning and couldn't accurately locate it. Unexpectedly, Modu actually sent him a hanging ring. Although he is now proficient in the portal magic, the hanging ring can not only help with positioning, but also help the mage better perform cross-dimensional teleportation. In other words, if Luo Bai wants to learn the advanced version of teleportation magic, from teleportation in the same dimension to teleportation across dimensions, the hanging ring is a necessary magic weapon. Modu sending him the hanging ring at this time is like the icing on the cake. The supreme mage asked me to bring this to you. You should need it. 
Just as he was thinking about it, Modu suddenly explained. Luobai didn't answer, just took the hanging ring and put it on his hand. He felt the difference the moment he put it on his hand. Before, he had to put in a lot of effort to concentrate, but with the hanging ring, his attention seemed to be focused instantly, saving him a lot of time. What a treasure! Luobai couldn't help but sigh. If I had given it to him earlier, he would probably learn twice as fast. It's called the hanging ring, and it's one of the must-have magic weapons for mages. It can help us focus better and travel through the multi-universe. Modu briefly explained the use of the hanging ring. Although Luobai knew it already, he still expressed his gratitude. Please make a special trip to deliver it. It's not troublesome. Modu replied calmly and introduced himself. I am a disciple of the Supreme Master and the Great Mage of Kamataj. Now you can be regarded as the Mage of Kamataj. In the future, maybe we, we will meet often. Just call me Modu. Although there is no strict hierarchical strength differentiation in Kamataj, there are still general titles. For example, Mage Apprentice, Mage, Temple Mage, Archmage, etc. Generally speaking, only the top ones in terms of strength are called Archmages, and Modu is one of the Archmages of Kamataj. Luobai knew this, so he was even more curious about other things at this time. With Ancient One's character and strength, it was impossible for her to forget to give the Xian Ring, unless she didn't want to give it at all. Since he didn't give it before, why did he suddenly ask Imo do to give the Hanging Ring again? Thinking of this, Luobai asked tentatively, did the Supreme Mage say anything else? Modu obviously understood what he meant, and smiled and said, Just now, a portal appeared in Kamataj, transporting a man named Obadiah to the Supreme Mage. Obadiah? Etc. So he sent Obadiah to Kamataj, and sent it to the Ancient One? Luobai was a little embarrassed and asked sheepishly, Then what? He called the Supreme Mage a bald man and wanted to take action, so he was exiled by the Supreme Mage. Modu briefly explained the situation. Luobai was stunned to hear this. Good guy. He only dared to say in his heart that the Ancient One was bald, but Obadiah actually had a big smile on his face. TSK, TSK. Where was he exiled to? Will he come back? Luobai continued to ask. Modu shook his head and replied calmly, I'm traveling to the multi-universe. Luobai, it is not good to offend anyone but the Ancient One. TSK, TSK. Obadiah, you sent Kamataj, right? Just as he was thinking about it, Modu suddenly asked. In an instant, Luo Bai's thoughts were pulled back. Um, yes, but it was an accident. I didn't expect him to be sent to Kamataj. Luo Bai explained. Imodu was not surprised and even expressed his understanding. I heard from the Supreme Mage that you haven't learned magic for a few days and you don't have a hanging ring. It's normal for this situation to happen. It should be much better after you have a hanging ring, Modu said. Before Luobai could answer, he continued to ask, By the way, what step have you learned now? I just learned teleportation magic, Luobai replied. After hearing this, Modu nodded and said, It seems that you are not very proficient in using teleportation magic. How long have you been practicing? Not sure, probably a few days, Luobai said. Although he knew Luobai was extremely talented early on, his answer still shocked Modu. A few days. Such a niche word. Now learning magic is calculated in days. How did you get this talent? It's so good. Modu couldn't help but sigh. Probably because. I have better luck. Luobai thought for a while and answered honestly. How lucky. Imodu was stunned and said half-jokingly, Then how lucky do you have to be to have such a unique talent? Okay. Luobai replied half-jokingly. Mordo didn't answer. The mission of the Xian Ring sent to him was also completed. I'm leaving first. If anything happens, you can come to Karmataj to find me. After finishing speaking, Modu planned to leave. Luobai stopped him and asked curiously, Modu, didn't the Supreme Mage ask you to take me away too? Luobai learned Kamataj's magic, and Ancient One also gave the Xian Ring. Normally, doesn't he have to go to Kamal Taj to continue his studies? But Modu didn't seem to intend to take him away, which was unreasonable. The Supreme Mage asked you to first learn the magic in the complete collection of the Supreme and take this opportunity to practice outside and gain some experience. Modu explained. Luo Bai suddenly realized. Does this mean he has been released? But anyway, he can learn it himself, so why not learn it? What's more, only here can you practice actual combat and only through actual combat can you quickly improve your strength. After thinking about it like this, he didn't hesitate anymore. After sending Modu away, Luobai once again devoted himself to learning magic. With the hanging ring, 
it would be much easier for him to concentrate, and he would learn magic faster. Luo Bai knows some basic magics, such as teleportation and magic shields, almost after seeing them, and can master them quickly. After Luo Bai knew most of the basic magic, he started learning the advanced version of magic, which lasted all night. It wasn't until the arrival of Tony Stark the next morning that he stopped for a moment. Hey Luo Bai, did you sleep well last night? I have some good news for you, do you want to hear it? I know you'll want to hear it, you're famous, have you read the latest newspapers and news? The two of us were in the news and it was the front page. How about Iron Man vs Mysterious Man, doesn't it sound pretty good? To be honest, I actually think the title Iron Man sounds pretty good I really like the title everyone gave. Me? Chapter 013 Tony Stark is happy today. His little mouth was like a machine gun, and he kept talking as soon as he entered the door, giving Luo by no chance to talk. He muttered for a long time, until he realized that Luo by hadn't said a word and finally couldn't help but ask, Why don't you speak? Aren't you happy that you were on the front page of the news? Happy? It's just that you're too excited, so it seems like I'm not that happy. Luo Bai couldn't help but smile in response. Only then did Tony Stark realize that he was too excited just now, and he quickly made up for it in embarrassment. I'm happy for you. You know, celebrities like me are often reported by major news, and I'm used to it. Really? But I didn't even have a chance to interrupt just now. Luo Bai continued to complain. Tony Stark became even more embarrassed and quickly changed the subject. Okay, let's not talk about this. Do you want to know what everyone thinks of you? Let's see, he said as he took out a newspaper. Luo Bai took it and checked it and saw four big characters, New York Crisis, printed on the most conspicuous front page. In fact, even without reading it, Luo Bai knew its contents. Before the birth of Iron Man, most citizens of New York City did not know that super abilities existed in the world. But after last night's fuss, people discovered that things were not simple. The New York media, government, and even citizens are paying great attention to this matter. Some people think the emergence of super ability people is cool, while others are worried about it. In fact, this was a normal reaction, so Luo Bai didn't pay much attention to it. What really concerned him was that the name he was called in the newspaper was Mysterious Man. Why do people call you Iron Man and give me the title of Mysterious Man? Luo Bai couldn't help complaining. Probably because people haven't realized that you can use magic. Tony Stark explained. Luo Bai said nothing because he could not refute. Although the newspaper published a photo taken by a drone, his face and the way he looked when he released the teleportation magic were clearly visible. But it is obviously impossible for the media to identify him as a mage through such a photo. After all, most people, like Tony Stark, do not believe that magic really exists in this world. Thinking about it, Luo Bai became a little more accepting of the title, Mysterious Man. But he was still a little curious. Tony, did you come to me specifically just to tell me that I was on the news? Luo Bai asked. Tony Stark shook his head, took out his sunglasses from his pocket and put them on while saying, Of course not. I'm here to take you to a press conference. Press conference? Luo Bai was a little curious and couldn't help but ask, What do you mean? Tony Stark smiled and said excitedly, You saved New York yesterday? and you can also do magic. You should be known to the whole world. And I have held a press conference through Stark Industries, at which I will announce the thing about me is Iron Man. And I also want to introduce you to the people of New York. There are mages in New York, which is a cool thing. It seems to be because he has a good relationship with Luo Bai, and because he is a mage. Tony Stark now wanted to introduce him through a press conference. With the influence of Stark Industries, if Luo Bai agrees to attend the press conference, he may become popular and become a very influential superhero, but as a result, his identity will be completely exposed. Thinking that he still had to grow up, Luo Bai refused this kind offer. Forget it, I still think this kind of life is purer. This made Tony Stark a little curious and couldn't help but ask, Don't you want everyone to know that you are a mage? If I can use magic, I will definitely want everyone in the world to know. After all, this is really cool. Luo Bai shook his head and explained, it feels great to be famous, but it also brings a lot of troubles. Trouble? What trouble? Tony Stark was puzzled. If it were anyone else, he might not be so confused. But if it were Luo Bai, he wouldn't understand. After all, Luo Bai is a mage, and he can send people thousands of miles away with just a raise of his hand. What kind of trouble would a person with such strength have to worry about? There are a lot of troubles. I won't be able to explain them clearly for a while. You will know by then. Just as he was wondering, Luo Bai gave the answer. 
Just this answer. Tony Stark felt that saying it was equal to not saying it. Okay. Although I don't know why, I respect your decision. I will hold a press conference later, so I'll leave first. Without further persuasion, Tony Stark said goodbye. After he left, Luo Bai couldn't help but think while looking at the newspaper in his hand. He didn't expect that he would get so many benefits after accidentally joining the battle last night. Not only did he get a hanging ring, he also showed his face in New York. Although being famous is a good thing, it also gives Luo Bai a greater sense of crisis. After all, being famous means that he may be targeted by more villains. At present, it seems that he can only work harder to learn magic. While thinking, Luo Bai continued to return to the room and learn magic. He didn't know how long he had been studying, but he didn't stop until he finally finished learning all the white magic Luo Bai in, the complete collection of Supreme Masters. After learning magic, Luo Bai didn't waste a moment, opened the portal and came to Kamataj. Kamataj Mahal. The Ancient One was discussing academic issues with the mages from afar, while Modu was listening. At this moment, a portal suddenly appeared and attracted the attention of the three people. If an unknown portal had appeared before, Modu might have been nervous, worried about whether Kamataj had been invaded. But after experiencing the last incident, he was no longer so nervous. Especially after seeing Luo by walking out of the portal and confirming his guess, he even had a smile on his face. Hey we meet again Modu took the lead in saying hello. Luo Bai also responded politely, yes, we meet again. Are you practicing teleportation magic? Although the hanging ring can help you position yourself better, it is only an auxiliary magic weapon after all. But don't worry, you have only practiced for two days. It's always difficult to practice at the beginning. There will be some troubles, just practice more and it will be fine. Modu comforted with a smile. He seemed to have misunderstood, thinking that Luo Bai had opened the wrong door again. So he comforted Luo Bai very patiently. In fact, he was not the only one who misunderstood. Even the Ancient One also misunderstood. Just when he was thinking about giving him a reminder to help him improve faster, he didn't expect to hear Luo Bai say in the next second. It was a little unsatisfactory before, but it became much smoother after the suspension ring. Modu was stunned and asked, So, you teleported here on purpose? Yes, I came to see the Supreme Mage. Luo Bai explained. Do you have anything to do with the Supreme Mage? Modu asked. Luo Bai nodded and said with a smile, I'm here to return the book. I have already finished studying the contents of this Supreme Complete Collection. As soon as these words came out, there was an instant silence in the main hall. Mordo. Ancient One. Ha. Huh. Study? Finished studying? It's only been a few days. You said you finished studying? Chapter 014. Both Mordo and Ancient One were silent, and the expressions on their faces were quite wonderful. No, it's only been a few days. There are more than a hundred kinds of white magic. You said you have learned them all? After a full five seconds of silence, Modu asked, You mean, you know all the magic in this supreme complete collection? There was disbelief in his tone, and he even thought that he had heard wrongly. Until Luobai nodded and said, Yes, I can do it. Only then did Amo do dare to make sure that he heard correctly. He turned his head silently and looked at the Ancient One. Ancient One didn't say anything. She just took the supreme complete collection and read it roughly. After reading it, she couldn't help but think, I was given the wrong book. There are indeed more than a hundred kinds of white magic recorded in it. Learned everything in such a short time? How did you do it? Although Ancient One was surprised inside, she didn't show it too obviously at this time. She invited the mage who came to ask for advice and exchanges to go out, and then she started talking seriously with Luo Bai. Have you mastered all the magic above? Ancient One asked seriously. Although it is indeed incredible that Luo Bai can learn all the magic in the complete collection of the Supreme, in such a short period of time, considering his high talent, it is understandable that he can learn it. Maybe learning and being able to master it are two different things. It's not that Ancient One has to be wordy, but if you don't lay a solid foundation, it will be difficult to learn from it. Luo Bai knew this well, so he replied, quite skillful. It is incredible that he can skillfully control more than a hundred magics, but his top talent requires enough time to learn all the magic in the complete collection of Supreme Masters. After all, what is recorded above are several types of basic magic such as space magic, defensive magic, and energy magic. Once you have mastered the basic theory, learning is quite quick. Typically difficult to get started and quick to learn. As for high-level magic, 
there was none in the magic book linked to Weishan Emperor. So he came to Karmataj to learn some more powerful magic. Ancient One naturally understood why he came here, but it was not that easy to learn high-level magic. It's not that she doesn't want to give it, but if she doesn't have enough practice and experience, she might not be able to understand it. But she didn't explain it directly. She just kindly reminded. Although the magic in the complete collection of Supreme Masters is basic, it can also exert great power if you master it skillfully. You need to practice more. Luo Bai nodded to express his understanding. I understand. Ancient One nodded and said, Now that you have learned all the contents in this book, you can go to the library and have a look in the future. There may be the books you want there. Kamataja's library, that's a great place. There are many magic books stored there. It can be said to be a treasure house that gathers all the white magic books. If Luobai could get in there, wouldn't he want to learn whatever he wanted? Modu, please take him to the library and return this book. Just as he was thinking about it, Ancient One began to make arrangements. Modu nodded and responded politely, then Supreme Mage, I'll leave first. When Luobai saw this, he quickly said, I'll leave first too, Supreme Mage. Then the two left the main hall. As soon as he walked out of the main hall and came outside, Modu suddenly stopped, suppressed his smile, and said seriously, You can't learn magic quickly and quickly. As the Archmage of Karmataj, Modu manages all new mages and is naturally responsible for every beginner. Although Luobai is very talented, it is hard for him to believe that Luobai has mastered all basic magic in such a short time. He was worried that Luobai was eager for quick success, so he couldn't help but remind him. Magic is not as easy to learn as you think. Being too anxious will only be counterproductive. Every mage wants to become stronger, but there is no shortcut to learning magic. I followed the Supreme Mage and trained many mages. Many of them wanted to contact more advanced magic after learning magic for a few days or a month, but in the end they failed because they could not understand it. Among them some people have even considered learning black magic. Although Karmataj is free, black magic is forbidden to be learned in Karmataj because learning black magic will cost you huge amounts of money, even your soul. I hope you will never get involved in this stuff. Imodu persuaded him earnestly. Although he meant well, he was worried that Luo Bai would learn dark magic because he was anxious to become stronger. But from a listening point of view, it doesn't always feel that comfortable. I think I am already very proficient in the magic recorded in the Supreme Complete Collection. Luo Bai said, his attitude became much tougher. Modu smiled and asked, then let's practice? Although the mages of Kama Taj do not need to undergo tests such as assessments, they often practice in actual combat. You can roughly tell how strong a mage is by practicing. Luo Bai knew that although he was highly talented, it was still difficult to defeat the Archmage at present. But he had to prove his strength, and he was willing to just test it. Then give it a try. Luo Bai agreed. Seeing that he agreed, Imodu couldn't wait. After all, he really wanted to see if Luo Bai had mastered all basic magic as he said. However, Considering that Luo Bai was a novice after all, he still planned to let Luo Bai take some steps. You go first. Modu said with a smile. Luo Bai took action as soon as he finished speaking. He clenched his fists with both hands, released the magic shield, and then attacked Modu. Magic shield, as the name suggests, is a shield made of magic energy. This shield not only has a defensive effect, but is also a very sharp weapon that can cause damage to enemies. Although this is only a very basic melee method, Modu was still a little surprised to see Luo by using the magic shield so skillfully. While using his magic shield to resist Luo Bai's attack, he sighed, It's amazing that you can control magic energy so skillfully. If Luo Bai had been training for half a year, Imodu would think it was normal to have such an effect. But it has only been half a month since he was able to release it so powerfully, which is really not easy. However, it is a sigh of relief. With Luo Bai's current strength, it is still too difficult to defeat Modu. Even Imodu didn't find it difficult to deal with it. He could even deal with Luo Bai's attack while talking leisurely. What else can you do? Although it was just a small discussion, Luo Bai shouldn't take it too seriously. But as a man, how could he hope that he would lose? It was too ugly to lose. Seeing how easily Modu responded to his moves, Luo Bai's desire to win was completely ignited. Chapter 015 Luo Bai knew very well that it was difficult to defeat his opponent when the strength was greatly different, but this did not prove that there was no way. Although Kamataja's mage likes to use melee magic, but come on, why is he fighting in close combat now that he is a master? Magic must look like magic. Thinking of this, Luo Bai stopped attacking. Seeing that he suddenly stopped attacking, 
Modu asked a little strangely. Why did you stop? You must have only mastered this one magic, right? Luo Bai shook his head and said, Of course not. After saying that, he cast magic again. And now Modu finally understood that he was using magic to retrieve objects. Object retrieval magic includes some basic principles of space magic, which is similar to Portal but slightly different. Mordo didn't stop him. After all, in his opinion, even if Luo Bai really gets something, it will be difficult to beat him. What's more, this competition is to see if Luo Bai really masters all the basic magic, and the magic of retrieving objects is also one of the basic magics. At this time, Emo Du was even more curious about how far Luo Bai could use the magic of retrieving objects. Object retrieval magic? For a mage, a good magic weapon can help the mage win the battle. This is a very smart approach. With your current ability, you cannot control many magic weapons. Modu said with a smile. This is not sarcasm, but the truth. There are indeed many treasures in the Marvel world. Some powerful treasures can even instantly enhance a person's strength. But the more powerful a treasure is, the more powerful it is usually required to master it. Not to mention whether the magic weapon Luo Bai obtained is really powerful, whether he can control it is the key to the problem. Luo Bai naturally knew this. So even he himself had no idea what he would get, it was all about fate. If he wanted to defeat Modu, he could only use the artifact. He actually has some understanding of the artifacts in the Marvel world. For example, the Infinite Rough Stone is a very powerful artifact. But it is very difficult to control the power of Infinite Rough Stones. Even Thanos struggled to use the Power Stone back then, not to mention Luo Bai's small body now. He probably wouldn't be able to use it even if he got it. There is really no need to risk your life in a small competition. After thinking about this, he temporarily gave up his plan to get the infinite rough stone. Fetching magic requires imagining the location of the artifact in your mind, so that you can open the door to space and get the desired treasure accurately. But because the time was too short, Luo Bai couldn't think of any other artifact besides the infinite rough stone that could help him turn the tide of the battle, so he could only follow the arrangements of the goddess of luck. The magic unfolded, and Luo Bai put his hand into the space door. At this time, Modu had not yet realized that the next situation would exceed his expectations. Actually, Karmataj has many very good magic weapons. Can I? F asterisk asterisk K? Modu originally wanted to say that there were many magic weapons in Karmataj's magic weapon room. If Luo Bai really needs it, don't bother. He can take some out for him to use temporarily. As a result, in the next second, there was an extra hammer in Luo Bai's hand. It was Thor's hammer. Momentarily, Imo Durin was stunned. He, who was always strict, couldn't hold back and cursed. It's not surprising that he was like this. It was really because he was too speechless. Thor's hammer is the weapon of Thor, the son of Odin. Why did Luo Bai bring it? How did you get Thor's hammer? Mordo exclaimed. His square face turned into an oval face in an instant. Kamataj detects all movements on the earth and there are many books in the library recording knowledge about the Earth and even the multi-universe. There's no way Mordo doesn't know what Thor's hammer is. It was a hammer made from a star, and it was endowed with the power of Odin, the father of the gods. How can Luo Bai fight with this thing? How is this different from asking him to fight Odin? Modu was stunned. Luo Bai was also stunned. He was a little surprised, but more surprised. Yes, why did he forget that there is Thor's hammer? This thing has the bonus of Odin's spell, and no one who is not recognized by Thor's hammer can lift it. This means that as long as you are recognized, it is easy to pick up Thor's hammer. The most important thing is that this thing is quite powerful. With the blessing of Odin's power, Modo can be mastered by every little mage. Looking at Thor's hammer in his hand, Luo Bai felt confident. You can continue. Luo Bai said with a smile. Modu fell silent. The silence was deafening. After a while, Modu complained, this thing is made of stars. It's just for everyone to learn from each other, so there's no need to be so serious, right? I just want to prove that I have indeed mastered basic magic. Luo Bai shrugged and spoke helplessly. Modu smiled and responded with a slightly embarrassed tone. You are indeed very skilled in mastering it. My Weishan Emperor. Thor's hammer is Thor's exclusive weapon. The Thors are in Asgard, not in the same dimension as Earth at all. Not to mention how Luo Bai got Thor's hammer. If you want to get this thing, Luo Bai must master the magic of interdimensional space. That's not elementary magic. It's completely an advanced version of space magic. Many mages who have practiced for four or five years may not be successful. This guy has been practicing for such a short time, 
and then reached out to Asgard? How did you do it? You mastered retrieving objects across latitudes in such a short period of time. Modu couldn't help but ask. He was not the only one who was surprised at this time. The Ancient One was also surprised. These two people made such a big noise outside the main hall. Ancient One is not deaf, so he naturally knows about it. She didn't show up because she wanted to see how far Luobai had mastered magic. But she didn't expect that Luobai could do this in such a short period of time. It seems that there is nothing wrong with the future. He is really the Supreme Mage. Ancient One opened his eyes wide with surprise. It's incredible, but Ancient One believed it. There is nothing wrong with the future, it is her who is wrong. Thinking of this, Ancient One walked out and interrupted the discussion between the two. Luo Bai, come in for a moment. Imodu, wait outside the door. The sudden arrival of Ancient One surprised both of them. Luo Bai was a little puzzled, but Imodu was more thankful. Fortunately, the Supreme Master saved him and saved his face. Otherwise, if he, a great mage, is defeated by a novice mage, how will he teach the newcomers if the news spreads? Modu immediately responded gratefully, Yes, Supreme Mage. Then he stood aside and waited obediently. Luo Bai walked into the temple again with a confused expression. What's wrong with the Supreme Mage? Luo Bai asked. As soon as he finished speaking, Ancient One took off the magic weapon he was wearing from his neck and handed it over. This is the Eye of Agamotto. You must promise me that from now on, you will protect it with your life. Oh? Luo Bai was very puzzled. Isn't this the time stone? The Ancient One actually gave it to him. Chapter 016 Eye of Agamotto is a magic weapon, which can also be said to be a container. Contained inside is an artifact, the Time Stone. In the Marvel world, there are a total of six rough stones, also called gems. They are time, power, space, reality, soul and the stone of the mind. The six rough stones are in different places and guarded by different people. The original stone of time is in Kamataj and is guarded by the Supreme Mage of all generations. So the Supreme Mage is also called the Guardian of the Original Stone. Now that the Ancient One has given the Time Stone to Luobai, is it possible that he wants to become the Supreme Mage? Although his talent is high, how long has he been learning magic? He has not received formal training from Karmataj. The Ancient One gave him the Time Stone so easily. Although Luo Bai didn't understand why, he still replied, I will protect it with my life. So this thing is given to me? Yes. The Ancient One nodded and handed over the Eye of Agamotto. Luo Bai took it with some confusion and then began to study it carefully. The Eye of Agamotto outside is a magic weapon used to carry the rough stone inside. The rough stone inside is called the Time Gem and it can control the power of time. Manipulating the power of time requires a certain amount of magical energy storage which is still a bit difficult for you now. But with your talent, it should only be a matter of time before you learn it. To open the Eye of Agamotto, you need to use a spell. This is to ensure the safety of the Time Stone. The spell is very complex and has been created by the efforts of the Supreme Mages of all ages. I will tell you the spell now, but you must not tell other people about the spell. Only you and the Supreme Mage after you will know this spell. Ancient One patiently explained the function of rough stones and how to use them. Considering that the Eye of Agamotto requires a spell to open, she decided to tell Luo Bai about the spell. But before she could say anything, Luo Bai used magic to match her gestures. Along with a green light, the Eye of Agamotto was instantly opened. Ancient One. Luo Bai. The two stared at each other for a full minute, and the atmosphere was very awkward. Luo Bai could clearly see. Ancient One's shocked eyes and gradually widening mouth. How did you open it? I don't know how long it took before Ancient One finally came back to his senses and asked. Luo Bai said with some embarrassment, Supreme Mage, this, I want to say that I am blind, do you believe it? Ancient One said nothing, but the expression on his face seemed to say, do you think I believe it? Although I know this is hard to believe, Luo Bai is really blind. Knowing the plot, he knew very well that a spell was needed to open the time stone. Because of this, he started tinkering with the Eye of Agamotto as soon as he got it, thinking about how to open it. Unexpectedly, he actually opened it. Not to mention that his luck is unlucky, but he was actually able to fall under a spell. Supreme Mage, I'm really confused. Actually, I've always been very lucky. Luo Bai explained sincerely. Ancient One frowned slightly and asked with a slightly confused tone, Luck? Good? She does know that it is lucky to have a girl with super abilities among the mutants. 
Can you fall under Agamotto's spell just by being lucky? Ancient One didn't quite understand it, but she thought that Luobai had to be informed of the spell in the first place, so she didn't want to delve into it further. It's okay if you know how to do it, go ahead. There is the information you want in the library. Ancient One regained his composure, with a calm tone in his tone. Seeing that she did not pursue the case, Luobai was extremely happy. After putting the eye of Agamotto on his body, he planned to leave the temple. After walking a few steps, Ancient One suddenly stopped him. You should return Thor's weapon to him. Asgard and Karma, Taj have never been in contact with each other, so it's better to live in peace. Luobai nodded and immediately expressed his understanding. You already have the rough time stone. Why does Luobai still need this broken hammer? Thinking of this, he immediately used teleportation magic to send the hammer back. After finishing everything, Luobai left. After he left, Ancient One stared blankly at his back and couldn't help complaining, How lucky are you? Can you get the right spell? The Ancient One is wondering. In the distance, there was someone more puzzled than Ancient One at this time. Asgard. Thor sat at the dining table and couldn't figure it out. I have such a big hammer. How could I not see it? Where did my hammer go? Thor roared loudly, and his anger made him throw the wine jar to the ground. No, can you believe it? He was drinking with his good friends just now. While he was drinking, his hammer disappeared. Thor, could it have been stolen? Asked a friend on the side. Impossible. Only I can lift that hammer. It can't be stolen. Thor replied firmly. But you tried to summon it so many times just now, but the hammer didn't even come out. My friend couldn't help but remind him. Most artifacts are identified by their owners, as is Thor's hammer. In the past, if Thor stretched out his hand to summon him, the hammer would fly to him no matter where it was. But now Thor's hammer doesn't respond. Not only Thor's friends were surprised, but Thor was also surprised. I could recall it before. Why can't I recall it all of a sudden? Thor muttered. At this time, he was very curious about where his hammer went. I have to look for it, Thor said, getting up and going to find the hammer. At this moment, a small yellow circle suddenly appeared in the space. Someone noticed this and shouted, Look, what is that? In an instant, everyone's eyes were directed towards the yellow circle. But before they could study it carefully, they saw a hammer suddenly thrown out of the circle. Thor quickly caught it with his hands. At first glance, good guy, isn't this my own hammer? Hammer? This is my hammer. Thor shouted excitedly. The people around him cheered too. Everyone is happy for Thor to get the hammer back, including himself. But while he was happy, Thor realized something was wrong. Wait, what happened to that yellow door just now? Teleportation? Thor asked. It looks like teleportation. A friend on the side agreed. Thor frowned. Good guy. Someone is brave enough to reach out to Asgard? Does any of you know what happened with the teleportation just now? Thor asked. But everyone shook their heads. After all, I don't know who sent the hammer and then disappeared without even showing his face. And few people have seen this kind of power. This doesn't seem to be caused by Asgardians. Someone reminded. Thor frowned. He also discovered that the power just now definitely did not come from Asgard. Someone could actually reach out to Asgard without anyone noticing and almost take my hammer away? I must find this man. Let's go to Heimdall and ask about the situation. He has the eye of Heimdall that perceives all things. He must know who invaded Asgard just now. I must find this person. Thor said as he led a group of friends toward the rainbow. Bridge? Chapter 017 Katmandu, Kamal Taj Luobai was in a good mood after getting the original time stone, with a smile that couldn't be hidden on his face. Modu, who was leading the way, seemed to be aware of his joy. After a moment of silence, he couldn't help but say, You seem to be in a good mood? It seems that the Supreme Mage has told you some good news. Luobai nodded and replied, Well, there is good news. Modu did not ask further, after all, he was still thinking about the previous trial at this time. Although the previous trial was stopped halfway, he was really convinced by Luo Bai. It only took a few days to practice to such an extent. It was really scary. Seeing that he was in a good mood, Modu immediately explained, I admit that I had some doubts about you before, but I just didn't expect that your talent is so good. This somewhat surprised me, and I didn't mean to target you. Modu took the initiative to seek peace, which surprised Luo Bai. In fact, he doesn't have to be like this, but from this point of view, he is quite sincere. Luobai was not a petty person, so he immediately replied, I don't take it to heart. 
Mordu shrugged his shoulders and said helplessly, I can say without exaggeration that you are the most talented mage I have ever seen. I used to think that no matter how fast you were, it would take you a month to finish. Nothing happened. To think that you could finish it in just a few days is so damning. Although he knew that Luobai was talented, he never expected that he would be so talented. Why? Why are the gaps between people so big? Modu was a little helpless. At this moment, Luobai suddenly asked, By the way, what time does Karma Taj usually start training? Modu was a little confused and asked, Why do you ask this? Luobai replied, Training. Don't new mages have to go through systematic training? Modu shook his head and said, You don't need to train now? Luobai was a little confused and quickly asked, What do you mean no training? Modu explained, After completing the introductory course, a mage can basically move freely. Like you now, you can choose to go to the library to read books and learn more magic, or go out of practice. There is no hard requirement to stay here. Meaning that I can move freely from now on? Luobai asked. Yes. If you encounter a bottleneck that cannot be broken through, you can ask me or the Supreme Mage for answers. There are three temples in Karmataj. If there is danger, the temple will recall all the mages. From the temple, you can go straight back to Karmataj, Mordu explained. Luobai frowned and complained helplessly. So I am completely self-taught? After all, I am also a disciple of Karmataj and I also got the time stone. Why do I feel like I have been left alone? Modu smiled and said, With your talent, it's probably hard for anyone to teach you for a few days. This is not a sarcasm, but the truth. With his talent, he will probably graduate from school after just a few days of study. What's more, the training content is relatively systematic, and the content learned every day is also very fixed. If he really trains with the mage, his learning progress may be delayed. Who knows how quickly he learned? Modu was helpless. After all, he has been studying magic for half his life, and he is also a mage at the level of an archmage. This was the first time he met a novice mage that he couldn't even teach. Okay, the library is here. Without thinking any more, Modu reminded him. The two stopped outside a building that looked very inconspicuous and even somewhat shabby from the outside. Through an old iron door, the two entered the library. As soon as I walked in, I saw a mage sitting at the table. The mage also noticed them and stood up. This is the administrator of the library. If you want to borrow books, you need to register with him. Modu introduced. Looking at the mage in front of him, Luobai was a little curious. After all, in his impression, the library administrator seemed to be the king. But think about it carefully. In the plot, Wang only took office after the previous administrator was killed by Cassius. So it is normal for the administrator not to be the king at this time. Okay, if you want to borrow books in the future, you can come here. By the way, are you going to live in Kamataj in the future? Just as he was thinking about it, Modu suddenly asked. Luobai thought for a while and asked, Can I not live here? You have now learned teleportation magic. With your talent, you will learn it for a few more days. Is it possible that I can stop you and prevent you from getting out? Modu asked. It seems to make sense. The room is ready for you. This is the address. You can go there later. But you already have a villa. I don't think you will stay in the dormitory. Modu continued. Luobai smiled and replied, That's not necessarily the case. After all, Kamataj is much safer than outside. He only knows some introductory magic now, so he might as well stay here and learn more magic before going out. Okay, I'll leave first. If you have any other questions, you can come back to me. Modu said goodbye and left. After he left, Luobai began to search for books in the library. The books in the library are divided very carefully and there are various types of magic books classified into space, time, etc. Luo Bai picked one book from each category, and then he unexpectedly found the magic book, the Book of Weishan Emperor. There are two sacred books in the Marvel world, which record all the magic in the world. One is the Book of Emperor Weishan, and the other is called the Book of Darkness. They respectively record the white magic and black magic of the Marvel world. It's just that Kamathage explicitly prohibited the study of dark magic, so naturally the Dark Book of Darkness could not be found in the library. But for now, the books he borrowed are enough to study. Thirteen books in total. I don't know. I thought he was preparing for the college entrance examination. Luobai sighed. After registering with the administrator, he returned to the dormitory according to the address and then started reading books. The first thing Luobai studied was the Book of Emperor Weishan. After all, this book contains all white magic and learning the magic in it can help him greatly increase his magic energy storage. 
It will be relatively easy to learn high-level magic, such as time and space later. It's just that the intensity of magic in The Book of Weishan Emperor is obviously higher than that in The Supreme Complete Collection. After looking through it roughly, Luo Bai found that it recorded the multidimensional transmission secrets of the secret door, also known as the portal, as well as the Ring of Gragador, the Mirror Space, the Sacred Sword of Emperor Weishan, and the Soul's Out-of-Body Experience, Gravity Control, and many other advanced magic learning methods. There is even a method to enter the Supreme Dimension on the last page, and it is suggested that after entering the Supreme Dimension, you can receive the blessing of Emperor Weishan. All in all, it looks quite complicated, but it's difficult but you still have to learn. Luo Bai could only start the hard learning mode. Chapter 018 Although Luo Bai understands the theory, it has a certain basis. But because his training time was too short, the magic energy in his body was not very powerful yet. Most of the white magic in The Book of Weishan Emperor requires powerful magical energy to control, which adds a lot of difficulty to his practice. The first magic that Luo Bai learned was called Aikin's Journey. Its function is to be able to duplication into countless selves and release magic at the same time. And each duplication has the same strength as the main body. The stronger the magical energy contained in the body, the greater the number of duplications. After several days of practice, Luo Bai was barely able to split two duplications. Although he learned quickly enough, he was still in a hurry when it came to energy storage. Unless he can get the blessing of Emperor Weishan or those ancient gods, the so-called blessing, simply put, means giving strength. Generally speaking, it is difficult to obtain blessings. It's described on the last page of the book. Simply put, that is, you must at least have the ability to enter the supreme dimension before those ancient gods will notice you. Otherwise, why would others give you blessings for no reason? It is impossible for Luo Bai to enter the supreme dimension with his current strength. I have no choice but to take my time. Luo Bai sighed and was about to practice magic again. At this moment, a golden light suddenly shone between his pupils, covering his eyes. Before he could react, he felt as if he had fallen into chaos. And the end of chaos is a golden light. In the golden light, three huge amounts of heads appeared in front of his eyes. The three heads were like a mountain, so big that Luo Bai couldn't even see their whole faces. Luo Bai was a little overwhelmed by the sudden change. Although he didn't know what was appearing in front of him, Luo Bai could still feel the oppression, a strong sense of oppression. For a moment, Luo Bai even forgot to think. Until a voice rang in my ears, talents beyond ordinary people are rare. Then another voice sounded, my child, you have an unusual future. Another voice echoed, you deserve to be blessed. Three heads said three different words. After he finished speaking, before Luo Bai even came back to his senses, the golden light became brighter and brighter, so bright that it stung his eyes. Luo Bai closed his eyes subconsciously. When he opened his eyes again, the three heads disappeared, along with the strange space. He returned to the dormitory, Kamataja's simple dormitory. Everything was as psychedelic as a dream, but Luo Bai clearly felt that he was much smoother, as if someone had forcibly transmitted waves of magic energy, and the magic energy in his body had increased by huge amounts. This is a blessing. Good guy. He was actually chased by Emperor Weishan to give him a blessing. Emperor Weishan is not an ancient god, but the collective name of three ancient gods. These three ancient gods are the Almighty Ohit, the All-Seeing Agamotto, and the Old Hogs. The three of them form the trinity of gods, Emperor Weishan. Therefore, in Luo Bai's memory, the image of Emperor Weishan is three heads. The three heads combine what they say. Luo Bai can 100% confirm that he has been blessed. He originally thought that in order to receive Emperor Weishan's blessing, at least he would have to wait until he had the ability to enter the Supreme Dimension. Unexpectedly, he was chased and blessed by Emperor Weishan. Luo Bai is so excited. Feeling the sudden surge of powerful energy in his body, he couldn't wait to start training. And at the same time, in the main hall, Ancient One, who was sitting quietly meditating on the multi-universe, suddenly opened his eyes. Kamataj was created by the Ancient One. And it can also be said that Kamataj is her dimension. This also means that she can detect anything that happens in Kamataj immediately. Even if others didn't notice the abnormality of Karmataj just now, she could still feel it because she was so familiar with it. That was a blessing, a blessing from Emperor Weishan. Blessings be upon Kamal Taj. Moreover, Emperor Weishan came here specifically. Even without asking specifically, 
ancient one could guess that the only person to whom the blessing could be given was Luo Bai. It's incredible that Emperor Wei Shan specially came to bless him. Ancient one couldn't help but sigh. In her impression, ancient gods like this have never actively given blessings. Not to mention taking the initiative to come and bless you. Those who can receive blessings from Emperor Wei Shan are usually those who have gone through trials, that is, only those who have entered the supreme dimension can receive blessings. But this time, Emperor Wei Shan actually came over on his own initiative? It seems that his talent alarmed Emperor Wei Shan. Ancient One muttered again. Emperor Wei Shan is in charge of all white magic. Once someone learns white magic, they will know it. After all, the power is borrowed from them. Presumably they realized that Luo Bai's talent was too strong, so they came to bless him. It's reasonable, but unexpected. But that's fine. With Emperor Wei Shan's blessing, Luo Bai can grow faster, and soon she will be able to leave with peace of mind. Just as he was thinking about it, Modu came over. Supreme Mage. Modu shouted as soon as he entered the door. Is something wrong? Ancient One asked Modu nodded and answered very seriously. A group of people dressed very strangely came to Kathmandu. They are now everywhere asking about the location of Kamataj. It seems that they are here with bad intentions. Ancient One didn't say anything, but he already understood in his heart. Thor should have come looking for him. I heard that Thor had a very bad temper, just like Odin back then. Luobai took his hammer, so it was normal for him to find it. Supreme Mage, do you need me to handle it? Seeing that she didn't speak, Modu asked again. Ancient One shook his head and said, Don't worry, they will go back if they can't find it. If they don't go back, I will go and have a look. Finding Kamataj is not easy. It would be even harder if the Ancient One didn't want to. So much so that Thor searched for it in Kathmandu for three full days, but couldn't even find a door. Thor, did we make a mistake? I feel like we have asked all the people in the city and no one knows where Kamataj is. Could it be that this place doesn't exist at all? Heimdall can't go wrong. But didn't he also say that he couldn't see who specifically held the hammer and could only roughly guess that it came from Kamal Taj? It's really strange. Heimdall has the eye to perceive all things. How can there be a place that he can't see? Thor's friends were talking a lot, but Thor was extremely irritable at this time. Three days of searching. Three whole days. I didn't even find a door? Is there really such a ghost place? Thor complained loudly. As far as the earth is concerned, there are places that they can't find. Why does he feel like this place doesn't exist at all? Among the nine realms, the earth is already the weakest existence. I don't think there is any so-called magic holy place in this place. I think we should go back, Thor. One of the friends complained, although not willing to do so. But after searching for so long and unable to find it, Thor believed that there should be no magical holy land on earth at all. There was no way. Thor could only go back. Cursing. Chapter 019 Thor and his party left Kathmandu. Upon noticing this situation, Modu immediately ran to report, Supreme Mage, those people have left. Ancient One was not surprised and simply replied, I already know. Seeing that she knew that Modu didn't mention anything more, he just changed his report to another thing. Supreme Mage, I have something to ask. Is there anything else? Ancient One asked. Modu replied, Luo Bai hasn't gone out for a long time. He has been staying in the dormitory during this time. He should be studying. Ancient One guessed. It should be so. He borrowed a lot of books and went to the dormitory a week ago, Modu said, with a bit of worry on his face. Ancient One didn't understand. So he asked, You look a little worried. Is there something wrong? Master Modu. Modu thought for a moment and then spoke hesitantly. I just went to the library to check his borrowing records. What books did he borrow? Ancient One asked curiously. Modu quickly gave a reply. The Book of Emperor Weishan, the compilation of time, the concept of space, etc., and so on. Ancient One nodded and replied calmly. They are all very profound ancient books. Seeing that there was no expression on her face, Modu was a little surprised. Supreme Mage, aren't you surprised that he borrowed these books? Without waiting for Ancient One to reply, he continued to talk about his worries. I know that Luo Bai's talent is indeed very high. But after all, he has just studied for a short time. I can't understand many of the books. I'm worried that he will waste his time. Modu's worries are not without reason. Normally, a mage learns step by step. Start learning basic magic, then intermediate magic, advanced magic, and finally learn the complete collection of white magic. The corresponding books include The Supreme Complete Collection, a brief history of secret techniques, 
the complete collection of secret techniques, and the Book of Weishan Emperor. It is not until the mage masters all white magic that he will study magic like time, space, and multidimensionality. But Luo Bai didn't borrow the two middle books at all, which meant that he skipped the basic stage of mage preparation and went directly to the final stage. Modu was naturally worried. In fact, this situation has occurred before. Some mages who are eager for success want to learn more powerful magic, so they borrow a lot of books that they don't understand. They study for more than half a year but make no progress at all, which is a waste of time. When encountering this kind of situation before, Modu would directly remind it and correct it in time. But due to Luo Bai's special situation, he couldn't make his own decision, so he came to seek the Ancient One's advice. Supreme Mage, do you need me to remind Luo Bai? Modu asked. Ancient One shook his head and said, No, let him learn by himself. If he doesn't understand, he will naturally ask. Without asking, it proves that he can learn. Although Ancient One is also a little worried. But thinking about the fact that the Weishan Emperor came after him to bless him a few days ago, the Ancient One felt that maybe he should believe Luo Bai. Thinking of this, the Ancient One said, His talent is beyond the understanding of ordinary people. Let him do whatever he wants. If he asks, just answer. Don't deliberately control him. Luo Bai's talent is different from ordinary people. So maybe you can really help him by leaving him alone. Modu seemed to understand this and replied, Okay. After reporting all the situations, Modu left the main hall. He originally wanted to go to the training ground to see how other mages were training, but out of worry, he couldn't help but go to the mage's dormitory to see Luo Bai's progress. Walking to the door of Luo Bai's dormitory, he hesitated and knocked on the door. Soon, Luo Bai opened the door a crack. As soon as he opened the door, Modu smelled a scent, which was the aroma of food. Are you eating? Modu asked. Luo Bai nodded and said, Yes. Have you eaten yet? Do you want to eat some? Modu shook his head and asked, Can I go in and sit down? Of course. Luo Bai invited warmly and opened the door. As soon as the door opened, Modu was stunned. Good guy. This is not a dormitory. This is obviously the canteen. At this time, I saw a round table placed in the center of the not-so-large room. There is a large pot of red soup boiling on the round table, and there are vegetables next to the pot. There are all kinds of meat, vegetables, and seafood. If you look closely, there is an open magic book on the table. What are you eating? Modu asked confused. Luo Bai held the bowl and replied while eating, Hot pot. I've heard of it, but where did you get these things? I've never seen you leave the dormitory. Modu asked confused. Luo Bai calmly replied, I got these with the Ring of Gragador. The Ring of Gragador is simply the magic of retrieving objects. As long as you think about it in your mind, you can get the items and weapons you want. Modu knew, but he really didn't expect it. Is this how you learn secret arts and use them? Modu couldn't help but complain. Kamataj's magic is also called secret technique or secret method, but the names are different, so don't pay too much attention to it. I still have so many books to learn, and I don't have time to go out, so I just wanted to save some trouble. Luo Bai explained. Now that you know how to use magic, things that can be solved with magic can naturally be solved with magic. Although Amo Du wanted to continue complaining, he still held back when he thought of the purpose of his visit. How are you studying? Modu asked. It's okay. Luo Bai replied. Good. After hearing his reply, Modu was already complaining crazily in his heart. Please, you borrowed a bunch of magic books that even I can't understand. You actually said your studies were okay? I've learned all these decades of magic in vain, right? Although he was already very upset, Modu still tried to stay calm and asked again, Which book are you studying now? This is the book of Emperor Weishan. Luo Bai pointed to the half-open magic book on the table. How are you studying? Modu asked again. Luo Bai shook his head and said, It's not bad. I've learned half of it. Modu? Half? It's only been a little over a week, and you're telling me that you've learned half of it? You've learned half of it in one week? Unable to hold back, Modu asked in surprise. Luo Bai frowned slightly when he mentioned this, and said with a somewhat helpless expression, Well, this book is quite difficult to learn, and it will probably take a lot of time to learn it all. After finishing this study, I still have 12 books to learn, and I don't know how long it will take to study. I can't stay in the dormitory forever. Luo Bai was really helpless. After all, when he saw that there were still more than 10 books to study, his eyes darkened. But Modu couldn't understand him, and even thought he was irritating. Please. The Book of Emperor Weishan 
alone is enough for mages to study for most of their lives. Luo Bai actually wanted to learn all the 13 books he borrowed in a short period of time. No, he hasn't learned everything yet. Annoying, really annoying. Chapter 020 At this time, Mo Du felt very aggrieved. If he continues to chat with Luo Bai, he will doubt his life. He suddenly felt that the Supreme Mage was right. A special mage like Luo Bai should be left alone. With his talent, even talking to him makes me feel unworthy. I just came here to see you, and see if you have any problems. Since you are practicing well, I will leave first. Modu said, turning around and leaving. He couldn't stay in this place for a second. But before he could take two steps, Luo Bai suddenly stopped him. Master Modu, I really have a question to ask. Oh? Modu stopped, with confusion on his face. You still have problems? What difficulties have you encountered in practice? Imodu asked in surprise. Luo Bai shook his head and responded, That's not true. I just wanted to ask if Kamathaj's magic book can leave here. No, Modu replied. In order to ensure the safety of the books, all books cannot leave Kamataj. Why do you want to go out? Well, I have to go out for some things. Luo Bai responded. I don't know where Tony got his mobile phone number, but he actually sent him a text message saying that he was in an emergency. Considering that he couldn't learn these more than 10 books in a short time, he decided to go to New York first. He went to New York and returned to New York, but he couldn't leave behind his studies, so he might have to read these books in New York later. But now it doesn't seem to work. Kamataja's book is not allowed to leave this place, which proves that it is impossible to take it away secretly even if the fetching magic is used, which gives Luo by a headache. You can memorize the content in the book so that you can practice even if you don't take it out. Modu suggested. Remember the contents of the book? Photographic memory? This ability? He really doesn't have it. He is just lucky, not full of buff. How is it possible to have more photographic memory abilities? Thinking of this, Luo by sighed helplessly. I can't remember so much content. Modu was silent for a while, and then replied after a moment. Most of the books in the library are very precious. Although they can be borrowed, they are not allowed to be damaged. It is difficult to guarantee the integrity of the books if they leave Kamataj, and they may even be damaged. Lost. So normally, it's not allowed to be taken out. However, there are always mages using the Ring of Gragador to take books out of the library, which makes it difficult for me to handle. Although I also reprimanded them, they returned the book intact, so I couldn't punish them. I also specifically asked the Supreme Mage how to handle this matter. But the Supreme Mage believes that mages are free and should not interfere too much. Think about it. Who can control the mage? You think so, Luobai? This matter is really distressing, Imodu said, with a look of distress on his face. But if you look closely, you can easily see a faint smile hanging on the corner of his mouth. Combined with his smile and what he just said, Luobai suddenly had an epiphany. Good guy. What Imodu means is that although it is not possible on the surface, it is not that no mages have done this secretly. As long as the book can be returned intact, no one will pursue anything, not even the supreme mage. So he was hinting to Luobai, you can take it out secretly. No wonder Cassius was able to steal books from the library later. Karmataj was really, too free. Thinking of this, Luobai spoke righteously. Master Modu, this situation must be prevented. Karmataj's book is so precious, it would be bad if it was lost. I think so too. So you won't do this, right? Modu asked. Of course not. Master Modu, you must believe in my character. Luo Bai said quickly. Of course I believe you okay. I'll leave first, then you study hard. After finishing speaking, Modu left, and before leaving, he gave a few pretentious instructions. As soon as he left, Luo Bai began to clean up the dormitory. Although he had promised to Modu just now that he would never take the book out, but anyone with a discerning, I would know that the two of them were talking nonsense. Modu had already hinted so clearly, it would be wrong of him if he didn't appreciate it anymore. So, wait until the dormitory is cleaned up. Luo Bai held the book and opened a portal to Stark's villa. Looking at his huge villa, Luo Bai couldn't help but sigh. Although Kamal Taj is nice, who wouldn't want to live in a villa? I don't know what Stark wants from me. Luo Bai muttered. He walked up to the study on the second floor and put away the magic book. After putting it away, he was about to call Stark to ask what happened, but the next second he heard movement outside the door. The movement was actually not that big. It was just the sound of gurgling water coming from the bathroom. The bathroom is at the end of the corridor on the second floor, still some distance from the study.
But because of his magic practice, Luo Bai's five senses were already different from ordinary people, so he could still detect even the slightest sound. This made Luo Bai a little strange. Why is there the sound of water in the bathroom? Could it be that there was a burglar in the house during his absence? His idea is not unreasonable. The public security in Country M is not good to begin with, and break-ins and thefts often occur. What's more, with such a big villa, it's normal for him to be targeted by thieves. Luo Bai frowned at this thought. Such a thief. How dare he steal from Master Fa's house? Tired of living? While thinking about it, Luo Bai walked towards the bathroom. At this time, he was very vigilant and was ready to take action at any time. He never expected that when he walked to the bathroom door, he saw a slim and slim woman who was all wet and only wearing a bath towel. At this time, the woman was wiping her green hair with a towel in her hand. She seemed to notice someone approaching, and she immediately turned her head. Luo Bai didn't give her time to react and immediately released the magic, Siderak Crimson Chain. The Crimson Chain of Siderak, the white magic recorded in the Book of Emperor Weishan. After use, it can summon crimson chains to imprison the enemy. If it is strong, it can summon countless crimson chains. Although Luo Bai's strength could only summon four chains for the time being, it was enough to restrain the woman in front of him. The moment Luo Bai used magic, for crimson chains appeared out of thin air from all directions and instantly restrained the woman. The woman seems to be no ordinary person, and she wants to use her ability on Luo Bai. Luo Bai frowned and immediately opened the mirror space to surround the entire villa, forcefully pulling the woman into his space. At this time, the woman finally became honest. As if she had never seen such an ability, the woman was very surprised and said, What kind of ability is this? Where am I? Why do I feel like I am disconnected from everything around me? But Luo Bai didn't answer. He just asked in a cold voice, How dare you steal Master Fa's home? Chapter 021 Steal? Master? After extracting several keywords, the woman quickly asked, So you are not sent by the Mutant Association to arrest me? You are the owner of this villa? Luo Bai did not answer, but asked, Do you think you are qualified to ask me any questions now? If you break into someone else's home without the owner's permission, you can't beat the owner of the room. Judging from the current situation, women are indeed not qualified to ask questions. It seemed that she finally saw the current situation clearly. The woman quickly apologized and said sincerely, I'm sorry. If you have anything to ask, just ask. Luo Bai put his hands behind his back, looked at the woman and asked, You just mentioned the Mutants Association, so you are a mutant? The woman nodded and replied sincerely, Yes. What's your name and why are you at my house? Luo Bai asked again. The woman was finally able to explain. My name is Lorna Day. I'm really not a thief. I think you must have misunderstood. I know it was wrong of me to break into your house, but I really had no choice. I hid in your house to avoid being hunted. I just want to hide in your house for two days and then leave. I really didn't steal anything. You can check the room, really? Lorna Dane explained with sincerity in her eyes. Hearing her say his name, combined with her appearance, Luo Bai knew that she was not lying. Lorna Dane. Mutant. Nickname. Polaris. She is the daughter of Magneto and inherited her father's ability to control the magnetic field to create fields. The most iconic thing is the long green hair. Mutant, long green hair. Luo Bai had already roughly confirmed in his heart that the woman in front of him was indeed Polaris. Combined with her explanation just now, it is not difficult to guess what happened. In the Marvel world, mutants have always had a very low social status. Mainly because mutants have very powerful abilities, and this ability threatens humanity, so governments everywhere are very repulsive to mutants. The government had no way to kill powerful mutants, so it could only manage them, so the Mutant Association appeared. The Mutants Association is an organization specifically responsible for managing mutants. They will capture the mutants and then control them. They say they control them, but they actually mean surveillance and research. Therefore, once captured by the people of the Mutant Association, the mutants will inevitably face torture that is worse than life. Because of this, most mutants are unwilling to be captured. After all, who wants to be tortured? The same must be true for Polaris. In order to avoid capture, Polaris accidentally broke into his villa. Seeing that there was no one in the villa, she wanted to stay for two days and wait until it was safe before leaving. Unexpectedly, by coincidence, I met Luo Bai and came back. Reasonable, but inexcusable. Although you may have broken in unintentionally, it is wrong for you to break into someone else's house privately. 
And you are still taking a shower in my house? You really don't see anyone outside. Luo Bai couldn't help complaining. Polaris was a little embarrassed and said hurriedly, In order to avoid being caught, I haven't taken a shower for a long time, so I borrowed the bathroom for a while. I'm really embarrassed. If an apology is useful, what else should the police do? Luo Bai frowned and continued to question. Hearing him say the word, police, Polaris was a little anxious. You can punish me, you can do whatever you want me to do. But please don't hand me over to the police. Once they find out that I am a mutant, I will be handed over to the Mutants Association. Polaris said eagerly. Seeing her like this, Luo Bai said in a deep voice, You still made demands? You know, your current behavior, even if I shoot you, is self-defense. According to the laws of Country M, homeowners can indeed shoot burglars, and it is legal and reasonable. Polaris apparently understands, too. If you really want to kill me, I can't accept it. But please don't hand me over to the Mutants Association, Polaris said. It can be seen from her words how scared she is of the Mutants Association and would rather die than be captured by the Mutants Association people. But think about it, it is better to die directly than to be tortured to death. There has always been a saying that says, scholars can be killed but not humiliated. Luo Bai could understand what she meant. Seeing as her apology was sincere, she is still a girl. Although Luo Bai was annoyed with her for breaking into his villa privately, he really didn't hate her enough to kill her. Thinking of this, Luo Bai took back the crimson chain and canceled the mirror space. The surroundings quickly returned to normal. Seeing that he did not launch another attack, Polaris asked with some surprise, You? Won't you kill me? Your behavior is certainly hateful, but since it is your first offense and the circumstances are excusable, I will not be cruel. Luo Bai said, Thank you. Polaris thanked him quickly. As soon as he finished speaking, Luo Bai continued, However, I don't intend to let you go just like this. Polar Star was stunned for a moment, and his expression suddenly became tense. Are you still going to hand me over to the police? Polaris asked. Without waiting for Luo Bai to speak, she continued, Please don't do this. In fact, we mutants are not all as bad as advertised. I have been hunted for as long as I can remember, but I have never used my ability to harm anyone. I just want to survive. You don't know how they treat us mutants. Almost all the mutants in the Mutants Association suffered in human torture. Many of my friends never even came out again, Polaris said. From her words, Luo Bai heard something was wrong. In his memory, Polaris' personality should be similar to that of her father, and he tried to resist the Mutants Association and establish the Mutants Underground Organization for this purpose. Why does it feel like she has no intention of resisting now? Could it be because we haven't reached that timeline yet? Thinking of this, Luo Bai asked, how old are you? 18 years old. Polaris replied. 18 years old, no wonder. Polaris is just coming of age. However, he was still a little confused and asked, I remember that Professor X was not trying to negotiate with the government to let mutants and humans live in peace. You could have gone to Professor Polaris' side and said, I wanted to save my friend, but failed. Luo by suddenly realized that he had nothing to ask at this point, but Polaris was still a little nervous. So, how are you going to punish me? Polaris asked. I'm in need of a housekeeper. Since you came to my door yourself, you can be my housekeeper. For three months, you will be responsible for helping me clean the room, look after the house, and cook. Luo Bai said. Polaris was obviously stunned after hearing this. She thought about all the punishments Luo Bai might give him, but she never expected that Luo Bai would let him work as a cleaner? Ah. Polaris was confused, and it took a long time before a single word came out of his mouth. Why? You don't want to. Luo Bai asked back. Polaris quickly shook his head and said, No. Then it's settled. Oh, by the way, from now on, your scope of action is only on the first floor. You can't go to the second floor. If you are discovered by me, you know the consequences. Also, you will have no salary for these three months. Luo Bai said. Polaris was stunned again. No salary. Still have to cook? I still have to lose money to subsidize my co-authorship? Thinking of this, Polaris couldn't help but ask, the money to buy groceries? You have to figure it out yourself. After all, this is punishment, and I didn't invite you here. Luo Bai shrugged and complained helplessly. Polaris, okay. Chapter 022 To be honest, Polaris is somewhat reluctant to be a housekeeper. After all, she is Magneto's daughter and she has a strong, rebellious spirit in her bones. Short name, Rebellion. 
If it weren't for the fact that she had done something wrong first and couldn't beat Luo Bai, how could she be so talkative and willing to be the cleaning lady? But now, there is no way. No matter how reluctant she is, she will do this free coolly. But before that, Polaris felt that she had to explain some situations in advance. That, that, I have something to say. After some hesitation, Polaris spoke. Say it. Luo Bai replied. Polaris seemed a little embarrassed, and after a moment she replied, I may be a little abnormal sometimes. In fact, I have been diagnosed with mental problems since I was a child. Sometimes I get rage, and sometimes I have extremely depressed and quiet. Bipolar disorder, right? Luo Bai asked. Polaris replied uncertainly, maybe it's the name. I didn't remember it specifically, but when I'm emotionally disturbed, I often can't control my ability. I hope you can still exercise some restraint when working, otherwise I will have to lock you in a little dark room. Luo Bai replied seriously. Polaris was stunned and asked in confusion, What does the little dark room mean? Considering that it would be troublesome to explain, Luo Bai responded perfunctorily, You will understand what it means by then. Luo Bai looked serious. Although he doesn't look very old, he may not even be much older than Polaris. But I don't know why Polaris just thinks he looks old and heavy, and seems to be particularly difficult to get along with. It is also for this reason that Polaris is always a little cautious when talking to him. Then, um, can I ask, what is your name? I mean, what should I call you in the future? Polaris asked. Master Luo Bai. Luo Bai responded. Hearing the word, mage, Polaris was confused. Mage? Is he the one who often appears in TV dramas? The kind of, mage who uses magic? Polaris asked. Mutants, biologically speaking, refer to mutated human races resulting from genetic mutations. So most mutants are either born with certain abilities, or they inherit them. In the Marvel world, these people are usually called human deformities, which are very different from mages. What's more, mages generally don't like to show up in public, so Polaris, like most people, has never heard that mages exist in this world. Hearing Luo Bai say that he was a mage, Polaris' eyes instantly lit up. As if she had found a new world, she continued to ask without waiting for Luo Bai's answer. So the red chain and the inexplicable space you created just now are all magic, right? At this time, the expression on Polaris's face was a bit surprised, and she looked like a curious girl. Luo Bai felt that these questions were difficult to explain clearly in a short while, so he simply gave up answering them. You put your clothes on first, Luo Bai said. Only then did Polaris remember that he seemed to be wearing only a bathrobe. Although it is indeed not good for a woman to dress so revealingly in front of strange men, Polaris doesn't seem to take it too seriously. Isn't this wrapped in a bathrobe? Master Luo Bai, can you tell me what a mage is like? When I was a child, I watched TV and it seemed that a mage could turn people into frogs and curse others. Is this true? Polaris continued to ask. Luo Bai didn't say a word and left speechlessly. He went straight to the study and continued to sort out the magic books. While sorting out the book, Luo Bai was thinking about what had just happened. To be honest, Luo Bai didn't expect that he would be able to pick up housework for free just after returning home. He had been thinking before that it was really inconvenient for such a big villa to have no housekeeper. After all, he didn't have time to stay here every day to tidy up. Unexpectedly, Polaris arrived at my door by itself. Although she looks a bit younger, her work may not be so reliable. But she is a mutant. She also has the ability to control magnetic fields, so ordinary people can't defeat her. It's hard to find a housekeeper like this who can not only look after the house, tidy up the room, but also pay for cooking. There is no other way, who gave him good luck thinking of this. Luo Bai was in a good mood, and after finishing sorting out the magic book, he sent a message to Stark. He didn't forget that he came to New York this time because of Stark. About 15 minutes later, Stark appeared outside the villa. As soon as the door opened, Stark walked in as unobtrusively as before. As he walked, Stark said, Luo Bai, where have you been these days? I've been looking for you. Stark walked over to the sofa and prepared to sit down as usual. But before he sat down, he noticed something was wrong. There is one more person in the room, and she is still a girl. She looks like she is underage. Who is this? Stark couldn't help but ask. My new housekeeper. Luo Bai responded calmly. Now Stark wasn't calm anymore. What the hell? Your new housekeeper? Are you serious? Stark asked in disbelief. Luo Bai nodded and replied affirmatively, yes. Stark still couldn't believe it. Come on. This girl looks unfinished. Whose miners come out to do housework? Why not do something else? Thinking of this, Stark continued, 
I'm actually not that conservative. You seem to be an adult, and you're old enough to fall in love. And I won't say anything, so you don't have to hide it from me. Or, she's a minor. If that's the case, I have to talk to you about this. You should be an adult after all. I have to say that Stark is quite clever sometimes. These words made Luo Bygone silent. Fortunately, Polaris opened his mouth to explain in time, Hello, Mr. Stark. My name is Lorna Dane, and I am the new housekeeper hired by Master Luo Bai. Stark is a celebrity in country M, on TV, newspapers, and magazines. He can be found almost wherever you can brush your face. There are very few people in New York who don't know him, so Polaris naturally knows him too. Because of this, Stark wasn't curious as to why Polaris knew him. What he was curious about was that Polaris was really the housekeeper hired by Luobai. He looked at Polaris with puzzled eyes for a long time, and then asked after a moment, My child, do you have any difficulties? If you're really in trouble, I can actually help you. You should still be in college at this time. Polar Star shook his head and said, I don't have any difficulties. I volunteered to be Master Luo Bai's housekeeper. Stark was completely speechless. He looked at Luo Bai with envy, jealousy, and hatred and asked, So, where did you kidnap such a beautiful beauty? At such a young age, you are willing to give her you a housekeeper? Luo Bai did not respond, but asked, Tony, did you forget that you came to me if you have something urgent? Only then did Stark finally remember the purpose of his visit. Oh, by the way, I mean, I have something urgent to come to you. To be honest, Luo Bai, I have been very depressed during your absence, really very depressed. I think I may not live long. Stark said, his expression dimmed. Instantly. Chapter 023 Can't survive? What do you mean? Luo Bai asked confused. Why don't you want to live even though you are so good? Polaris on the side was also frightened by these words. He couldn't help but ask, You have appeared frequently in the news and newspapers recently. You are rich and famous. Why do you suddenly say such things? Stark sighed and said, A lot of things happen during your absence. I just look happy, but in fact I am not happy for long. There is a problem with my arc reactor. Arc reactor? Luobai remembered it when he mentioned it. Are you poisoned by palladium? Luobai asked. Hearing what he said, Stark's eyes lit up as he was still very depressed. You know what's going on with me? Stark asked. Looking at your symptoms, they look quite similar. Luo Bai pointed at the veins on Stark's neck. It was obvious that they were different from ordinary people. Seemingly seeing that Luo Bai knew about palladium poisoning, Stark asked happily, Then do you know how to deal with it? To be honest, I can't think of how to deal with it. I have tried many methods, but none of them are ideal. Stark could clearly feel that his health was getting worse, and his smart butler Jarvis kept reminding him that his health was very bad, but there was nothing he could do. Although he has been working hard on research, he has never been able to solve the problem of palladium poisoning. There are only some ways to alleviate such symptoms. Did you see this? Stark asked. He took out a huge kettle filled with a green and inexplicable liquid. Did you see this, chlorophyll juice? I eat this stuff every day. To be honest, this stuff tastes really bad. Stark sighed, turning into a bitter look. Luobai understood and said, I am very sympathetic to your experience. Do I need sympathy? No, I need a solution. Do you have any good ideas? Luobai, I want to hear your opinion. There is nothing Ethan can do. Stark complained. Since the terror incident, the only people Stark can trust are Ethan and Robin. But he was right to ask Luobai. After all, after understanding the plot, Luo Bai really knows how to solve the problem of palladium poisoning. Are there still some missile fragments in your heart that have not been removed? Luo Bai asked. Tony nodded and replied, Yes. I should be able to help you solve this problem. Luo Bai replied, and then opened the eye of Agamotto. Aiming at Stark's heart, Luo Bai tried to use reverse flow. Since Luo Bai just got the time stone and hasn't used it much, his hands will inevitably shake a little when he uses it for the first time. Fortunately, everything went smoothly and Stark's heart was quickly restored to its original state. The moment his heart recovered, Stark felt a difference. He seemed to be alive again. Feeling the changes in his body, Stark asked in surprise, Oh my god, Luo Bai, how did you do that? It's just a little bit of magic. Luo Bai responded with a smile. Cool, Stark became excited. But soon he remembered something again, so he couldn't help but said, Luo Bai, I am very grateful to you for saving my life again but I am worried about the materials for the arc reactor. Stark used palladium as the core material of the arc reactor, which led to his poisoning. 
Although his heart has returned to normal now, he still has to replace the core material of the arc reactor. Only, my suit has been upgrading, and it requires powerful energy to drive it. With the current technology, I really can't think of what material should be used to rebuild an arc reactor. Stark replied with a sigh. Luo Bai thought for a while and asked, Tony, is your relationship with your father not very good? Why do you suddenly ask this? Stark asked confused. Luo Bai explained, Don't you want to replace the materials of the arc reactor? Your father may have a solution. My father? Stark complained in confusion, but he has been dead for a long time. What I mean is that your father once researched a new technology that can solve the material problem of the reactor. Luo Bai explained, New technology? His father? Why don't even I know that my father has researched new technologies, but you know? Stark asked, his face full of confusion. This question, I am a mage after all. It is normal to be able to predict the future. Luo Bai replied with a smile. Although this explanation may be far-fetched in other places, it happens that Luo Bai is a mage, so his explanation is reasonable. Predict the future? Are you mages so awesome? Stark complained in shock. After finishing his rant, Stark looked hesitant, as if he was thinking about something. I remember this when I mentioned it. I recently met an organization called SHIELD. They seem to have some of my father's things. I heard that SHILD is also related to my father. Stark said, The full name of SHILD is the Strategic Homeland Defense Attack and Logistics Support Bureau. It is a special force of the International Security Council specially designed to deal with various bizarre incidents. To put it simply, it was founded by the government of Country M and is used specifically to manage people with super abilities. Although the original intention and purpose of its creation are good, it is still managed by humans, and it is still managed by agents. So Luo Bai doesn't particularly like her in terms of actions and handling style. Especially the director of SHILD, Nick Fury. Luo Bai was even more disgusted. Although some of his actions are good, his starting point is also to benefit mankind. But his thoughts seemed very wrong to Luo Bai. What's more, the combat power in SHILD is very impressive. Such a bastardized organization cannot manage people with super abilities at all. According to Luo Bai's understanding, SHILDS top management has basically been eroded by hostile forces, so it's okay not to mention it. But in Stark's case, SHILD can really help. SHILD can indeed help you in this matter. Luo Bai explained. By the way, they want me to join the Avengers. Stark complained. Are you going to join? Although he already knew the answer, Luo Bai still asked symbolically. Sure enough, he heard Stark's affirmative answer. I have this idea. To be precise, I have joined now. They said that the Avengers were created to save the Earth. This is very consistent with my thoughts. By the way, they seem to have plans to let you join. Why do they know about me? Luo Bai asked confused. Stark explained. Do you remember that we dealt with Obadiah together before? SHILD used the sky eye to observe the situation at that time and knew about your existence. They asked me about you. I said you were a mage. That's right, but I have no interest in joining the Avengers. Luo Bai simply refused. Actually, I guess that you would refuse, because in my opinion, you are a very low-key person. In fact, I have rejected them for you before, but they said they wanted to see you and were standing outside the door. Do you want to see them? Asked Stark. His words made Luo Bai hesitate. If he goes by what he thinks in his heart, Luo Bai definitely doesn't want to see him. But considering Nick Fury's character, he will definitely try his best to see himself. In order to avoid subsequent trouble, Luo Bai thought it would be a good thing to make it clear now. Since they are here, let them come in. Luo Bai relaxed. Stark didn't say anything, just took out his phone and sent a text message. Soon there was a knock on the door, and Polaris immediately ran to open the door. The door opened, and a sexy short-haired beauty appeared outside. There was also a bald man standing next to the beauty. Yes, another big bald head. It's just that this time it's a braised egg head. Chapter 024 Knowing that the people coming belong to SHILD, then their identity is not difficult to guess. That braised egg head must be Nick Fury, the director of S.H.I.E.L.D. As for the one next to him, he should be the Black Widow, whose full name is Natasha Romanoff Romanoff. Both of these two are outstanding agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Nick Fury is even known as the King of Agents. As an agent, you must have received long-term professional training. He has a thorough grasp of human nature and so on, especially an agent of Nick Fury's level. Because of this, he always has some confidence in him, confident that he can persuade anyone. 
As soon as he entered the door, Nick Fury walked to the sofa and sat down with a very serious expression. Then he briefly introduced himself, Hello, my name is Nick Fury. I think Tony has already told you some general information. Since Luo Bai didn't want to waste any more words, he directly replied, As I said, I have no interest in the Avengers. Nick Fury didn't seem surprised and didn't even mention it. He changed the subject, I heard Tony say that you were a mage? Yeah. Luo Bai nodded. Nick Fury said with emotion. Although it's hard for me to believe that there are mages on Earth, I really can't explain how you made Obadiah disappear out of thin air. Can I ask someone like, are there many mages like you on Earth? Luo Bai frowned and said, this question of yours is not polite. Nick Fury seemed to understand. He explained, you know, most of the people living on the Earth are ordinary people. SHILDS responsibility is to protect and manage the Earth. So I must eliminate all factors that threaten the Earth. So you think mages are a threat to the Earth? Luobai asked. Nick Fury shook his head and said, I'm not sure. If you are really a mage, then you have stronger strength than humans. Like a mage or someone with super ability. If they are born one day, they will destroy the Earth. It's hard for humans to resist this plan. When superpowers appear, some humans may think it's cool, but some humans are also worried that the existence of superpowers will pose a threat to humanity. It's obvious that Nick Fury is such a human being. Luo Bai could understand his worries, but being questioned made Luo Bai somewhat dissatisfied. However, he did not argue too much. He just smiled and asked Nick Fury, If the mage really intends to harm the Earth, do you think you can deal with it? The Avengers is the answer. Nick Fury responded seriously. Everyone in the Avengers will protect the Earth and prevent any evil forces from threatening the Earth. So you think those with super abilities who are unwilling to join the Avengers will pose a threat to the Earth? Luo Bai asked back, with a meaningful smile on his face. Nick Fury was stunned for a moment, and then replied, Yes. Luo Bai said nothing, but the smile on his face gradually disappeared. His silence silenced Nick Fury. Their eyes met, and the atmosphere became terrifyingly solemn for a moment. Seemingly noticing something was wrong in the atmosphere, Natasha Romanoff on the side spoke. I don't think Luo Bai will be detrimental to the Earth. After all, he helped Stark before and solved the last crisis. Natasha Romanoff is also an agent, so she naturally sides with Nick Fury. Although Luo Bai knew that the two of them were most likely acting, one is a white face, the other is a bad face. But from a listening perspective, Luo Bai is more acceptable. I think you can talk more than him. So why are you not the king of agents? Luo Bai asked. Natasha Romanoff shrugged and complained half-jokingly, maybe it's because he is older than me. In our line of work, experience is very important. Then you are at a huge disadvantage. Luo Bai replied half-jokingly. The two of them made fun of each other, which made Nick Fury's face even darker. Agent Romanoff, watch your words and deeds. Nick Fury scolded. Natasha Romanoff shrugged and said nothing. It was Nick Fury who noticed something was wrong. You know I'm the king of agents? Nick Fury asked. You must know that all the information in SHILD is top secret and cannot be checked by ordinary people. The personal information of agents like them is even more top secret among top secrets. How did Luo Bai know that he was the king of agents? You've investigated me? You shouldn't. You shouldn't be able to investigate my information. Nick Fury was puzzled. At this moment, he looked at Luo Bai with more and more doubts. Luo Bai smiled brightly and responded casually, Of course I know. I even know that you were an army colonel during World War II and only joined SHILD after the war. How do you know these things? Nick Fury asked, his expression becoming serious. Luo Bai did not answer directly, but asked, Nick Fury, do you really think that SHILD is well protected and airtight? Is it possible that SHILD is actually completely different from what you imagined? What do you mean? Nick Fury asked again in confusion, his expression becoming more serious. Luo Bai still did not answer directly, but just said, You think that everything can be under your control and plan, but in fact, everything has been out of your control a long time ago. I don't believe that you can protect the Earth, so I don't want to join the Avengers at all. His words were already very direct. It could be said that they were direct and even a little ugly. It's no wonder Nick Fury's face gets darker and darker the more he hears it but Nick Fury can't even find the words to refute. After all, judging from the current situation, he has lost this game. Nick Fury tried his best to find no information about Luo Bai, but Luo Bai seemed to know him well. So from this point alone, he has already lost. He knew very well that it was impossible to persuade Luo Bai to join the Avengers, 
but he still wanted to struggle. The Security Council will not allow the existence of superability people who are out of control, not to mention that there is almost no information about you on a global scale. You are not willing to join the Avengers. Have you thought about how to face doubts in the future? Question mark. Nick Fury asked. This is not a threat, but more of an advice. After all, no matter how powerful Nick Fury is, he still has to listen to what is said above, which is the Security Council. But Lu Obai was not worried at all. Tony has been pursued before and faced opposition at United Nations meetings, but do you think Tony cares? Lu Obai asked. Stark quickly echoed, I don't care at all, just think of those people as farting. Since then, Nick Fury has been completely speechless. Okay, then I wish you good luck. I hope you won't mind what I said today. After all, I just want to ensure the safety of the earth. Nick Fury said. Although some of what Nick Fury said today is indeed not pleasant to hear, considering his starting point, it was a good one. In addition, Luo Bai didn't want to have too much entanglement with SHILD, so he didn't care too much. I've always been very lucky, Luo Bai said casually. The things that should be discussed have been discussed, and the things that should be solved are almost solved. Nick Fury and Natasha Romanoff are also planning to leave. As for Stark, he also planned to leave because he was anxious to deal with the poisoning. Just as the three were about to leave, Nick Fury received a phone call. After answering the phone, Nick Fury's eyes became serious. Trouble is coming, Tony. I think we need your help this time. Chapter 025 Stark's agreement to join the Avengers does not mean that he approves of S.H.I.E.L.D. It is simply because the Avengers are related to his father. He doesn't like Nick Fury and S.H.I.L.D. from the bottom of his heart, not to mention that his palladium element matter has not been resolved yet, so he is very upset. Honestly, there's never a time when you can't find me without trouble. Stark responded coldly. After speaking, he looked at Luo Bai and complained, To be honest, I don't really like SHILDS style of doing things. I was recruiting bodyguards before, and Natasha Romanoff came to apply. It was only later that I found out that she turned out to be S.H.I.E.L.D. sent here specifically to get close to me. Don't you think it's very annoying? Stark said while rolling his eyes at Nick Fury. Nick Fury quickly retorted, Tony. I think you should understand that we are here to help you. Stark snorted and replied, You can come to me directly, but it is difficult for me to accept this method. What's more, since you are here to help me, you should know that my current situation is very bad. Nick Fury didn't seem to want to continue talking about this matter with him, so he changed the subject. Let's not talk about the past, but we really need your help this time. Hulk is out of control. Hulk. Luo by frowned. After all, this name is very familiar to him. Isn't it the famous Hulk? During his absence, Banner actually joined the Avengers? Hulk is out of control? That would be too troublesome. Just as he was thinking about it, Stark suddenly spoke. At this time, his expression became serious, and he must have known that this matter was very troublesome. He thought for a moment and then said, Where is he now? Things around SHILD are pretty bad right now. He's doing massive damage. Nick Fury explained. Stark understands the destructive nature of the Hulk. He originally didn't plan to help, but now he became nervous. Then let's go over and take a look now. Luo Bai, I'm leaving first. He said goodbye to Luo Bai anxiously, then left with Nick Fury and others. As soon as they left, Polaris couldn't help but start complaining. This man named Nick Fury is really unpleasant to talk to. Indeed. Luo Bai responded perfunctorily and looked at the time. He didn't expect time to fly by so quickly. He always felt like they had just chatted for a while and it was already dinner time. Time flies so fast, it's almost time. Go prepare dinner. Luo Bai instructed. Polar Star, who was still complaining at first, changed his expression instantly when he heard the words, prepare dinner. She asked hesitantly, Master Luo Bai, are you really going to let me cook dinner? Luo Bai nodded and replied, of course, this is what we agreed. Polaris smiled awkwardly and responded, I know. I'll do housework for you to apologize. It's just, I've never cooked before and I'm afraid you'll find it unpleasant. Luo Bai fell silent after hearing what she said. After all, Polaris is only 18 years old and has just come of age, so it's normal that he can't cook. It is indeed a bit embarrassing to ask someone who has never cooked before to cook. As Polaris says, even if she is willing to do it, Luo Bai may not dare to eat it. Thinking of this, he hurriedly said, then you can buy it outside. Polaris was relieved to hear that she didn't have to cook dinner. Okay. I will go to the nearby supermarket to buy some food and come back. Polaris agreed repeatedly and then went out. 
At this time, in the study room, Luo Bai has opened the book of Emperor Weishan and started studying. Stark's matter has been resolved, and Luo Bai's purpose of coming to New York has been completed. But he is not in a hurry to return to Kamataj now, mainly because he finds that he still has too little actual combat experience. When learning magic, you can't always bury yourself in reading. It's best to learn and practice at the same time, so he plans to stay in New York for a while. After all, there are many situations in New York, and there are always practical opportunities when you stay here. But Luo Bai didn't expect that the opportunity for actual combat would come so quickly. While he was reading, his phone suddenly rang. He picked up the number and saw that the caller was Stark. Didn't he just leave not long ago? Why did he call me again? Luo Bai muttered and answered the phone as he spoke. As soon as the call was connected, a very confusing voice came from the other side. Cries for help, smashing sounds, police sirens. All kinds of sounds were mixed together, and those who didn't know thought Stark was on the battlefield. Before Luo Bai could ask about the situation, Stark's intermittent voice sounded, Luo Bai, can you hear me? I need your help. Can you come over here? I'll send you the location. The situation is very urgent now, and I don't have time to explain too much. Hulk is so awesome. Luo. Sisisis. Along with a burst of electricity, the communication was cut off. Combining Stark's phone call and the previous conversations between several people in the villa, it is not difficult for Luo Bai to guess that Stark is dealing with the crazy Hulk at this time, and the situation is very bad. Luo Bai was not surprised by this result and this call for help. After all, according to Luo Bai's understanding, among all the members of the Avengers, Hulk's combat power is already very top. Not only does he have far more Superman-like strength, speed, endurance, and recovery abilities, but his abilities also increase with his anger level. It can be said that the angrier Hulk is, the stronger he will be. With Stark's current technology, it can be said that there is absolutely no chance of subduing Hulk, but he actually agreed to Nick Fury to help before. It is really courageous. It's fine now. Realizing that he couldn't defeat him, he came to ask Luo Bai for help. Although in a head-to-head -head fight, Luo Bai cannot defeat Hulk. But he is a mage. What kind of strength and speed does the mage fight for? What he fights for is magic. So he is still confident against Hulk. Thinking that he really needed practical experience, in the current emergency situation, Luo Bai still planned to go and have a look. Raising his hand to cast the portal magic, Luo Bai quickly arrived at the accident place based on his positioning. As soon as Luo Bai walked out of the portal, he saw a huge green giant not far away, shaped like a boulder, standing in the middle of the road and roaring angrily. Pedestrians around had never seen such a terrifying giant, and they were so frightened that they screamed and ran for their lives. Stark, wearing the iron suit, would be thinking of ways to attack him from the side. In addition to Stark, SHILD and the police department also dispatched combat forces. Machine guns and bullets kept firing at Hulk. But this attack is like scratching an itch for Hulk. It won't hurt him at all. It will only make him angrier. He waved his hand and punched Stark. This punch accidentally sent Stark flying to Luo Bai's feet. Hi Tony, are you okay? Luo Bai greeted. Stark raised the steel mask, revealing his entire face. At this time, he was frustrated and exhausted. No, I'm not good at all. This guy is too strong. Stark complained. Thanks for watching. You can find the next videos in the playlist linked in the info card, directly on my channel, or right here on the screen. And as always, if you have any feedback, feel free to share it in the comments too.